Alright, and we are live with the 31st episode of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose, slash Seth Okage. This week, I am joined by Sarah and Blaine, as well as special guest, uh, Sam, otherwise known as Little Arcanine. Um, as always, you can find this show live on Twitch at 6.30 p.m. PST. You can find it later on podcast services and on YouTube as full episodes and individually cut up segments. Um, at the top of the show, I want to give a shout out to... Uh, that's not the right list. Shoutouts to Patreons. At the Super Patron tier, $5 and above is Ramen Nomad and Bo. At the, uh, I forget what the other Patron tier is, but $3 tier, uh, Fourth Big Boss and Sly. Also, shoutouts to Twitch subs, Candy Unplugged, Ramen Nomad, King Cory Bear, Chai Bum, JNewbie666, Aztec God, Nitro, Atma Phoenix, and Lurvenar. So, big shout out to everybody there. Um, let me make sure I don't have everyone else muted. Is it? Nope. Everyone's here, right? Alive? You can't mute me. <laughs> there we go. I was like, hello, please. How is uh how's everyone doing this week? Pretty good. I'm alive. So that's alive is much better than dead. I, I I can get behind that that political statement. Wow content patch release week. I'm having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh Fuck, well, I can't speak. English is bad. It's a bad language. Delete it. It's, it's true. I agree. It, it is a terrible language. I, I will stand behind the villain's philosophy of Metal Gear Solid 5. <laughs> dumb plot twist, whatever. Uh, Sam, who... I the like heck? that dumb plot twist. So do I. Uh, we, we, we need to do a spoiler cast on Metal Gear Solid 5 now. That That's just set this <laughs> it, it, ha- it has to happen. I need, I need to read like 60 hours of Metal Gear 5. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. I've, we can make up crazy conspiracy theories about how it's actually a sequel to Silent Hill Homecoming. If Everything's a sequel to Silent Hill. Blaine, you and I were just talking about like games I put a stupid amount of fucking hours into. That Metal Gear 5 is one of them. Um, Sam, who, who the heck are you? Explain to people. You, you, you like art and redacted things. Yes, um, I am also a gremlin uh, on Twitter. Uh, I work at Square Enix, Square Enix, don't know how to pronounce it, whatever works. Um, I am an artist, not, just to clarify, not not there, I do art in my own time. Um, I do concepts of like character art, fan art, things like that. Um, and I love Mir, obviously I'm here, <laughs> and Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy. Awesome. I believe you also have a couple near tattoos, also, right? I do. I can see if I can like have the best we boy, see in a meal. A meal, and then I have best girl Kaine. Nice. Oh, so far, I'll be adding um, Fira and the King and the wolves and whatnot eventually at some point. <laughs> so. uh Sa- safe to say that you absolutely hate near you can't stand it whatsoever right i wish it would disappear off the planet like just <laughs> completely just gone <laughs> but yes hey, thanks for all- coming out everybody this has been a great show um <laughs> like <it>. comment subscribe <laughs> sub uh, um but yeah safe safe to say now that it is inked in your body uh you therefore have the highest tier of opinion and everyone else oh no (laughs) yes i mean that's exactly how it works yes big big facts over here um but so yeah we we don't have much of a super structured format for this spoiler cast i figured it'd just be best to go in and go in whatever direction um good since you are the undisputed mega fan uh, above every, everyone else on the planet, uh, <laughs> is there anywhere you want to start in regards to spoilers for Nier? Um, I mean, I guess for if we can just, in general, just spoilers, we can just jump in at the beginning. I would say ending E, but we could save that for later since I have a Yeah, we got theory, build up to theories. ending E. Yeah, I got, I got theories. So yeah, we could just start from the beginning. It's probably. I think okay. that's a good yeah. approach. I, I, I guess we can just like start with like yeah, just from the beginning to to ending A, basically. Yeah, there's, there's uh, a lot. Uh, who has the earliest experience with Near back in the day? I'm assuming you also, Sam. Yeah. Yeah, I played it 
when it first came out, but I was like really young. Like I was like, Yeah, a- like I, I feel like a lot of it probably probably went over my head. <laughs> oh yeah. I actually stopped playing it because it annoyed me when I was a child because I had a terrible attention span. And I was like, this looks cool, but it's really slow. <laughs> <laughs> valid. <laughs> Completely valid. And uh Blaine, when did you uh first play near, I guess? Um, it's funny, I think I played Drakengard fairly early and barely got into it, and then played near. I bought it in... I'm trying to think. Because, funny story, I managed to find the one new copy at a local Best Buy, I think in, like, 2016, for oh, on wow. 360. Yeah. Holy crap. And, well, because I realized after seeing it there, like, five times, and I was like, wait, this is, like, apparently, like, a pretty great game, and also is, like, getting, not rare, but just, like... You, you don't really see it. So I was like, forget it, I'll just grab it. And I started it. I didn't, I got like, I want to say I got like halfway through the first half and then put it down. I was like, I don't know how I feel about some things and maybe I'll come back to this. I didn't for a while. And then I got back into it in like 2017, I think, or it was, a, it was like right before Automata came out or like right after it came out. Um, so I played near, loved it, ate it up, played, couldn't stop, like obsessively played it, and then eventually played Automata. And um, now I'm self conscious about Automata because I learned, you know, fun, funner story. I told Jose this, but I learned apparently the canon accepted <laughs> way to say that is Automata because that's I heard how it's said. the same said. thing. And I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. So, so, my friend. Know. I my boyfriend really- messages me saying, "Oh, so her, his boyfriend, his girlfriend, my friend Claudia, um, is playing Fancy Star Online too, and they say it like that." And I was just like, "This is bullshit. I, oh, I no. don't, ex- I don't respect this." <laughs> mm, automata, and I don't care if anyone tells me otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> it, is it GIF or JIF? Oh my god! Don't, 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 <laughs> don't. Let's not go down that rabbit hole. No. Nah. Um, Sam, did you also play uh, Drakengard back in the day, or is that something you revisited afterwards? I did. I played Drakengard 3 forever ago. Um, I want to say around 2015. Um, God, that's what? how old that game is. It's very old. Yeah, you can you can tell when you... Because it was like right at the end of the PS3's lifespan, right? Yes, and it... A great game. Highly recommend it. But like... It's so clunky. <laughs> Very mm-hmm. 17 frames per second. Uh, not, not even joking. Not 100%. Like, not even joking. <laughs> I remember someone on Twitter posted, like, a video, and I showed my fiancé. I'm like, no, when I say the frame rate is, like, ridiculous, like, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's bad. And <laughs> I never played uh, the first Dragon Guard because it was PS2. Yeah, and I was too young, and it's rated M, and my parents were like, "Nope." That's a hard rated M too. Yes, yeah. and so ended up after playing Dragon Guard three, just watching a playthrough, so I kind of get the story. Not like it makes any sense still, but yeah, Dragon Guard three. I wish they'd bring it back. Some kind of remaster or something. That's that's like the dream. That I, mean, will, I will say, as we're talking about Drenkard and that kind of stuff, uh, I just want to give a shout out to the uh, clumps somewhere into the ether because uh, I found out what happened in Nier and in Drenkard because the Square Enix social tweeted about Clemps' video before Nier Automata came out. So I was able to literally catch up and enjoy the franchise, even though I'd never played any of the Drenkard games. And I was able to find out what happened and the stuff that I didn't play in Nier. I mean, obviously beat it now but like back then i was able to watch his videos and be like i missed all this and just actually like hear someone who actually understood it yeah talk about it and even corrected himself in like other videos where he's like hey i got this wrong this is actually what 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 this is and adding a bunch of humor and just making me enjoy a story like like dragon guards which i normally wouldn't be like oh i actually kind of enjoy this partially because when i think of it i think of clumps so uh thank you thank you clumps because second, of because of clumps time. i am here <laughs> I, Jose, I what was... Oh, sorry, you go on. Oh, yeah. I, th- I think we're both going the same way anyway. Um, so I played uh, 
Automata uh, first, um, just after kind of seeing it, everyone uh, freak out about it when it came out in 2017. Um, Sarah's actually the one that told me to check out Clemson's video, so that's how I learned about some of the near stuff. I did. Um, I was like, watch Clemson. Even though I would say uh, Automata is, is basically... It's not like a complete isolated experience, but uh, I wouldn't say like near is required reading for it as much as like some nice uh, winks and nods and whatnot. Both yeah. games essentially spoil the other. So it's like, I can't really say, oh, play this one before that one or that one before this one. You're going to have something ruined for you regardless. Yeah. And, and we won't get into it too much now, but they both for their structure, they both rely on the same kind of ending B twist, same kind of general idea. Yeah. But uh, yeah, with that, let's just go and jump into what that first route ending path, whatever nomenclature people want to use for it. Um, I I know at least for me going through, I like I already knew what happened because, you know, Clemson's videos. But overall, I think it's like a solid uh, action JRPG of its era. Um, The the combat is is improved with the um, with the remake. It's not from what it was at first, I would imagine. it was for, not I guess good. I guess for the three of you, oh. this is a this is a huge improvement over the original, right? <laughs> yeah. As someone who loved Automata's combat so fucking much, as soon as I hit the the like attack button in this game, I honest to God screamed. Like I was like, this is just Automata. <laughs> Great. Like it's just like they took what was good from Automata and was like, people really liked this. Maybe we should do this. And you start fighting stuff, and it's so fluid and it's so like it feels so good to just constantly hit things and yet of- they simplified it so it's yeah. like you don't have all it's not like a straight up character action game but it still is complex enough that like you have fun with what you're doing mm-hmm. was the original no, combat combat like you, was, no was, no it's fine was um the original combat like kind of like mediocre or was it just like Whoa. actively bad it was serviceable okay it did what it needed to do and that's about it yeah it yeah, it did its best. <laughs> yeah, but it is. I'm very grateful that they did. Let's 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 not beat around the bush. The original near as good as the story is, with some complaints I'll get into later probably, and so I'm sure all of us will have some kind of gripe with something. Um, that game basically exists fundamentally to get that story to the player, and like the rest of it is just kind of like here's a th- here's like a thing from a game that you know and is cool and here's an interpretation on it or a subversion of it it's not really a game that you go into like i think that's what makes near as a series so hard to just randomly recommend because Mm. unless you really know what that person's taste even with automata like unless you know that person's tastes you might be recommending them something that they're just gonna bounce off of really hard yeah i I think to even build off of that i would say i would still recommend automata to um to like basically anyone even if they don't necessarily go through all the endings and everything but um so i like i love the story of of near replicant gestalt whatever um it but like game design wise like is i can't even tell you how many times you go back and forth to the library throughout like all yeah. five endings and the side quests, which you don't have to do all the side quests you only need to do i believe like three in order to get the weapons to get the endings even though getting money can kind of suck if you're not growing wheat uh thank you for that by the way blaine you're welcome uh, very wheat and rice <laughs> there you go um but yeah loved everything about the story should we go like plot point plot point by plot point or kind of like go into the characters first I could try to like do a summation like like time limit me on maybe like five ten minutes and i could try to summarize the basic plot of straight up to a and then we can then go maybe like character by character and how things reflect and then we can then go further into like how the different endings change what you know from that first playthrough you think that's a good way to approach it yes yeah Thank yep. you for the hosting, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, oh, let's, let's just do plot point by plot point, I guess, if you want to take the lead on that. So, Nier is a game about a boy or a grown man, depending on which version you're playing, who wants to protect their sister slash daughter at all costs, will do anything to protect that sister slash daughter, and we'll say sister for the sake of this, because we're talking mainly about Nier Replicant. And, um you as the player witnessing what that person is willing to do kind of changes your perception of of what 
a traditional hero narrative can be. Um, ranging from starting off as playing as near right at the outset, uh, or rather playing as the protagonist, um, right at the right at the like apex of a massive apocalypse level like bad time scenario, and everything going to shit outside of a convenience store. But then fast forwarding a thousand years to seemingly the same character, but not. Um, I'll admit going... real quick that that initially threw me off because I'm like, oh, is this like some kind of weird like anime rules where everyone like ages stupidly slow and they're actually like mm. all a thousand? Then then you just kind of quickly learn like, oh yeah, that's not what's up. So I'm like, okay, so there's obviously like already some weird ass shit going on, yeah, based off the and, years. And they just that's just a setup for you to get your get your mind rocked later anyway. But um. Yeah, and like, you know, you then you're in the thousand years in the future, seemingly the same character, but not really the same character, um, taking care of your sister again, and now just going on little typical JRPG quests. And that pretty much goes up until she gets lost, and you have to go to the Lost Shrine to find her, and that's your first encounter with a character who I think we all can say we love, Grimoire Vice. Yes. Liam O'Brien just making his microphone melt with how good a voice actor he is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's he's honestly probably my favorite character in the entire game. Just like he he's a smart ass, he's pompous, he's fucking rude, uh calling people hussies left and right. <laughs> but uh I fucking love him at the <laughs> end of the day. <laughs> my favorite my favorite line of his is from later in the game when he when he's having his whole I need to merge, become one, and he just goes, become bitch. <laughs> hey, that, it took me out i was cracking oh up. i was laughing i, I love it <laughs> so much of it too is just like down to that vocal delivery it's like one of the best performances I've, I've seen in a fucking long time oh yeah and so you meet you meet vice as the main character loves to call him even though vice wants to be called his proper full name um and you get to you you know you see the establishments like this is kind of your typical jrpg story you have plucky main character you have br- like uh, what's the word um not snobby but pompous. stuffy you have your, pompous exactly you have your pompous like holier than thou character who's just a, literally a book uh, you have your little sister you want to take care of, and then as things prod along, you then make your way to the airy, still doing all these little tasks, and you meet another really great character, Kaine. Um, she's mad. She's always mad, for good reason. <laughs> yes. Which, I want to use this point to bring up my one of my major complaints about the game, and I know, Jose, you we kind of sh- are of the same mind on this. I think Kaine is one of... She's Arguably the most interesting character in the whole game, even more so than the protagonist. Um, her conflict is way more interesting than the protagonist's conflict. I hate that while it's a visually appealing design, I really hate how sexualized she is, because again, this is a spoiler cast, so we're not going to mince words. She is also the, ca- the game's sole intersex, or I've seen some people interpret it as transgender, but I think more so it's intersex character. Um, I don't think that Yoko Taro and whoever else was involved with the design of her character, visual design of her character, meant it in a way of like, we're going to make this horny because she's also this. But it just creates an unfortunate situation where like, I would love to just sing the praises of this game constantly, but I can't ignore things like that. Because Mm -hmm. intersex folk in media are already sexualized to hell and back if you've ever looked up any number of intersex slurs in pornography. Um... And, but and that, it even just kind of like undercuts like a lot of the seriousness of, of, of like the events going on. It um, does. Yeah. Um, and you have lines like that. I don't know if they meant it. Like there's a line that she has where um, the uh, a monster she's fighting is pretending to be her grandma and tells her you should just die. And it's a really great emotional moment. But Kaine says a line. Um, oh, she's the one who taught me to be okay with this mutant body. And it's vague enough that you could say, well, she's not talking about um, she's not talking about being intersex. She's actually talking about a possession, which she's living with a fiend. Uh, not a fiend. <laughs> she's living with a, a, a gestalt named Tiron. That is basically like, oh, if you don't always be mad all the time, I'll just overtake your whole body and kill you, and you'll be a shade. 
Mm-hmm. And, and even then, you don't find that out until uh, ending B, or I guess like throughout ending B. Exactly. So, so, so what else are you supposed to... Yeah. <laughs> well, even that first playthrough, you don't know either. So it's like, what is she talking about? Mm-hmm. And then first you learn the intersex thing, and then you learn the Tehran thing. What were you yeah. saying, Sam? I didn't mean to talk yeah. over you. No, I was just agreeing with you. Um, no, I... Um... No, go ahead. So you can go ahead. You yeah, go, Sarah. I, you have the tattoo. You have you have rite of passage. No, 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 no. Okay. Sarah, you go. Oh yeah, go ahead. I just think it should be also pointed out that they 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 did the not as egregious as Metal Gear Solid Five did, but they did the thing where they kind of explained why she's dressed the way that she is. That still doesn't like mm-hmm. it's like oh the canon thing is that shades don't like sun sunlight, so they explain it away by kind of dresses the way that she does so that she can constantly have her skin ex- exposed to the sun to try to put Tyran into like into like uh pain but that's still not a way to explain that she literally exactly like, she i don't want to say anything i don't want to say like too deep stuff because twitch is like censorship stuff but like oh like, yeah you're right <laughs> pieces that have no explanation for why they're exposed <laughs> yeah I, or, I, I'd, yeah. I'd rather like, just creators yeah. be honest about like hey we wanted to make a horny design don't try to like well, it even goes past that. that. Yeah, what Shiokotaro is usually pretty good with, like, yeah. with, you know, people talk about. Yeah, he's a weirdo. Kata. It's like, yeah, it, well, why it's you, like why'd you design her this way. Well, because I, I like uh, attractive women. It's like, oh, that's yeah, valid. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Someone I follow made a really good point a long time ago, where it's like, yeah, we can be like, okay, at least he's honest, but at the same time, it's like it's still that same issue of like you're going out of your way to make characters horny, but you're also not thinking about the implications, and we don't. I mean, it's like okay, like. Because you brought up Automata, fucking like how that to be his design and even A2's design don't really. It's funny actually because A2's design is almost like feels less sexualized, even though she's showing more skin. But like the fact that Two B has that whole gimmick where you can make her skirt disappear and you can just play that way, and it's like you didn't need to do that. And you're be, and we get it, you're horny, but also like it's you're going like extra at that point, and it just yeah. kind of it undercuts things. Like Jose was oh, saying, yeah. oh, that's why I was upset about them transferring that trophy to replicant Yay. i'm like no. i'm so glad you brought that up oh. i was angry because like i was gonna say like in regards to how kind is dressed is i've also seen it explained where it's like um because you know of her body and like growing up and hating herself because people were terrible i hate that explanation so much like yeah, not you it, obviously but yeah, the people but latch on to it as canon yeah and they're like well she wants she wants to like uh, like embrace her femininity and so that's why she dresses like in lingerie to be like as feminine as possible which yeah you know i mean i it, it's good but at the same time it's still like come on i mean those same people even like for the longest time were the ones saying oh she has a dick because she's possessed by a male demon like that was something i heard that Damn. was one of the things that made me stop playing it was because like I heard this, um, my boyfriend looked something up and found out that they used, uh, for what it's worth, the, herm- the term hermaphrodite is. I don't know if it's quite a slur, but it's kind of getting there because it's a hu- yeah. it's a term for inhuman creatures, for animals yeah, that you I shouldn't don't think use they in use it anymore. They don't use it except yeah. for specifically strictly animals, so it's it's dehumanizing. Yeah. And that was a term that was bandied about with her a lot in Western translations. I don't know if I can say the same for how they say it in the Japanese text, because I don't know the words for those kinds of things, yeah, but I same. wouldn't be surprised if it was, honestly. Yep. Agreed. Um, sorry to, if we, Sarah, did you have anything else you wanted to add? I mean, I was just going to say, don't forget that Yoko Taro is the same man that when 2B came out, he saved all the hentai pictures of 2B into a specific Yeah, folder. exactly. And, and uh, was, was just like, please keep sending me more. Quite, it's like, quite the, did you have something to add? <laughs> quite the opposite of Ken Levine there, Sarah. <laughs> well, no. See, you he's like, please stop. Please. He well, said, no. See, please send me more. Like, it. see, and Ken Levine wanted to act that way, but then when Barrett C came out, he's like, "Hey, look at my sexy daughter that I just told you don't make hot stuff of." <laughs> but she's quote unquote, I guess, because she's legal in that DLC, so it's okay. Stupid. I'm not. We'll have a spoiler cast about Bioshock Infinite, and I can yell about that. Oh, for fucking please, two hours. please, let's fucking do that. Also, <laughs> um, do anyone mind if I try to if I get to the next story beat? Yeah, go, go for ahead. it. All right. Um, oh, actually, actually real quick, can, can we talk about the airy? Like, I, I think when we get to the airy, that's the first point. Like, I like the music, like up to that point, but like the air, I'm like, oh, this is fucking mm. like creepy as shit. Everyone's all yeah. isolated. It just fucking oozes atmosphere. 
it, it really showed. Oh, sorry, Sam, you go on. I was just gonna say it's unsettling, and then you're looking around. You're like, how do how do people navigate this town? What how? <laughs> How do they get <laughs> barrels around? There's just ladders. <laughs> Nothing makes sense. Yeah, that's that's it. That's Quick, I also think that the airy is is a great thing to be like this. This game is of its time. I think the airy is like a great representation mm-hmm. of that. Because yeah. within the first five minutes, my 25 year old dumbass was like, "I'm lost." <laughs> like, no, literally. Go. Oh, see that muffled ladder in the background? It's blending in with that gray environment. You gotta go up that. And I'm like, I would have never seen that if no one what? had pointed that out to me. If there's like no markers on it, like no, there's like, a- hey, it's a little brighter. Not to not to put you on blast there, but like I even had to. I think while you were playing it, I had to tell you where to go because it's just still, even though it's a remaster and everything is crisper. That was one of the things that did not really update. You, ha- I still had to tell you it's that oh, specific you. ladder of like the three ladders you can get, and it's right after where you walk in. So you wouldn't think that that's progress. You would think maybe that's like a side path, and progress would be furthest from you. I was embarrassed messaging you because I'm like, please help me. I don't know where to. Go. I've broken every box. I've talked to everyone. Yeah, because like even with like the updated graphics and everything, it's like the level design is still kind of dated. It would, exactly. Like, what, what are you going to do about that? Nothing except, so okay, good luck. Good. <laughs> I will say one thing I usually dread about revisiting like older JRPGs is just, um, especially PS1, PS2 era, just like you get to the point where just like, what the fuck do I do? What random NPC do I have to talk to in order to get things progressing? But this was actually good about it. It's just like, yo, here's a fucking red mark on your map. You're good to go. I was like, fucking yeah. thank you. At least they give you that because that was in the original game too, from what I remember. I still got lost in the. I, w- I went through the entire area 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 be- before I saw like, oh yeah, there's the golden little hut on the cliff. I should just go to that. How do you get to the hut? I can't see if it's one. Yes. <laughs> it's <a> I, <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I did the the same exact thing. I like ran all the way around and I hopped and like through the little part before you fight the giant gestalt and like went through all those boxes and I'm like, huh. This isn't where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> no, I did that the first time I played it, I think, like back in 2017 or whatever it was. A mess. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, so then you do have that fight with, uh, I, I'm going to forget half the names, but the big shark. Uh, huh? Shade. I keep wanting to say fiends. I keep wanting yeah. to say fiends. Yeah. I played yeah, Final Fantasy X recently. <laughs> Ugh. Um, yeah, There's so the no big... Blitzball. No, thank God. Um, so yeah, the big shade that has a shark head. You beat that, and you get to get you get introduced to Kaine and near uh, your protagonist, uh, and and Weiss Weiss t- wake her up, and you know, first she's like does the whole she's the Sundari like I don't want to stay away from me, whatever. I don't like you, but thanks by the way, Babaka, <laughs> and. You get the beginnings of like not I don't want to say an implicitly romantic relationship, but you get like this interesting dynamic of like you know Kaine being shown kindness for the first time because from what we all know of having played it, she was never shown kindness. She was both she was both um, hounded for who she was biologically, but also um, just being like poor, being with her crazy grandmas. People because I remember a lot of people didn't like her grandma. I think either and. She's had led a really, I mean, she had to go through it as quickly as I can. She had, she was grew up intersex. People knew this and hated her for it. Um, she loses her grandmother in while being attacked by that same shade and has to merge with another shade in order to survive. And at that point, her life goal is I'm going to kill this shade. And once the protagonist helps her take care of that shade, I believe if not in that conflict later in that, uh, before the first half ends, um, she's kind of lost. And so she ends up just going with the protagonist because she doesn't really, she didn't plan that far ahead. She expected to die. Actually, no, no, I'm correct. It, it was that you, you stop the shade and that like when you go back afterwards and then you wake her up cause she was dying or whatever. Um, sorry for getting that confused, but, Eventually, you keep doing tasks. You learn. You get more acquainted with Devola and Popola, the two uh, women who basically run your village. Uh, Popola mainly. Devola. Devola just kind of hangs out in the pub in the town square and sings. Um, they make important. Me- and what I like about this game 
to try and organically get to it is that while you are, yes, going back and forth all these times to different areas, you go meet the brothers who work at the junk heap, you go, go back here, you go to facade later, you go back to home, you get all these little tidbits of, of storytelling. Like you have basic conversations that are very, very nonchalant, but to you, the player, like, what the fuck? Like when, when I think near, uh, just, I'm just going to keep start saying near ca- casually drops the whole, like, Oh, is that like how the sun never goes down and it's always bright outside and you realize that the pl- earth is no longer spinning on its axis? <laughs> um, and no, I honestly didn't even think dead. about that. That didn't even occur to me. That's what it yeah. is, yeah. Oh, shit. It's, the sun never goes down because the earth is no longer uh, spinning. or it's le- That or it's spinning so slow that it just doesn't matter. If I remember, um, it's not spinning because Drakengard 3 talks about how there's like a dark side of the earth and how there's the light side, if I remember correctly. So I'm pretty sure it's not spinning anymore. Oh, uh, so then that would make sense. Yeah. Um, Just as a quick uh, note, because I think we went over it and it's not like in the grand scheme of things like a big thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you go to the brothers and the junk heap, who I believe both are actually voiced by Yuri Lowenthal, which is kind of really? funny. I wouldn't be surprised. I believe they both are. Um... Because it stood out, I don't know, whenever I hear Yuri Lewenthal, it just sticks out to me like a sore thumb, and I love his voice acting and whatnot, but I'm just like, oh, he's going to cast a fireball jutsu, fuck yeah. Um, but but just like your first interaction with them, going through their, uh, their like, it's not a side quest, you have to do it, but where you have to like find their mom, and then you have to tell them, you can, you can choose to tell them if their mom died, and they, she was actually dipping out on them with a lover, I'm just like, wow, this game is like going to some kind of like, dark fucked up shit like there, there's some stuff leading up to that but that's the first time it like kind of like sat me down just like there's gonna be some like uncomfortable stuff and there's not gonna be like a real clear line of morality perhaps it's that's uh, the name of the game and also uh go ahead go ahead i'll just agree yeah i want to jump on with that and say that also the fact that like instead of some games that try to do that and then just kind of ignores that it happens as soon as you walk out of the room no matter what option that you pick near always is like i don't know if that was the right thing to do like he always is mm-hmm. like pointing out directly like oh that wasn't great or maybe that wasn't the right thing i should have said and then weiss is always one to be like well shit's gotta hit the fan eventually like you gotta fucking say something and it's like it's mm-hmm. how the way that that game handles it's like really tough moments because i personally said i was personally honest with them i was like i was like sorry boys you're at that age like gotta be honest like don't want to lie to you and it's it's like the way that the game handles you making those choices even though like it i mean spoilers they don't do anything in the long run like like you may get a different cutscene depending on what you what you pick but like they aren't gonna like like this is not dragon age or like mass effect it's not gonna come back and bite you in the butt like two hours in it just it makes you feel like either a bad person or a worse person. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's not about like guilt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's guilt. Every, and I think that's probably one of the strongest. It's like weird. It's like, I think the, one of the strongest things about the writing of both games, or especially in near, near uh, one, is the fact that you're never, like, like Sarah said, you're not left with things of like, well, if you choose X, you get Y. Some of them do break down that way. Like, oh, if you turn this, there's one with there's the crate quest with the old lady where like you can turn her in and get a money reward, or you can not turn her in and you open up like a new shop or bonuses or whatever. But more often than not, you're either given choices like, uh, like the lighthouse lady. That is one of my oh, yep. favorite uh, side quest lines. Because you shit on me while, for my choice. I didn't shit on you. No, you did shit I? On me. But you were like, oh, I playfully shat on you. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I don't even I don't even remember what the choice was, honestly. But you I know tell her, you tell her the truth. Oh, I remember what it was. And you lied to her, right? <laughs> I and then, and then, you, and then I even if you lie to her, she she like she kinda like already knows and ex- is accepting mm-hmm. it, and it's just like yeah. wow, there's like this kind of like weird fucking morality, just like maybe leave people to believe whatever they want. And they, and they do the same thing with uh, the two-year Lowenthal brothers or the older brothers just like, yeah, you know what? At least I'm happy my mom had something to like strive for, even though she meant leaving us. The little brother's just like, nope, I cannot, I can't fucking no. accept that. No, literally. Or yeah. like, I mean, it's a constant theme throughout both side quests and main quests. You have, uh, and, and, and I think it's one of those things where subversion is the name of the game where like, you know, you think you're going to answer X and you're going to get bad result or good result or whatever. 
But like, um, there's the one with the jewel, which is like an extension of the landlady, a uh, landlady, the light lighthouse lady side quest, where a woman is like, "Oh, I'm trying to find this one jewel. It's really priceless to me, and I really want it." And you go through all the Michigas to go get it, but then you find out over the course of getting it that it was actually a gift from the lighthouse lady's lover, and it never got to her. And it was, and it was, and so you have a choice of: do you keep, do you lie, and do you keep it and lie? Do you give it to her, or do you have it buried with the with the, either I believe either the lighthouse lady or the the man? And I actually chose to bury it with the lighthouse lady because I said it was hers in life and she never got it, so I think it should be hers in death. When you talk to her, Nier doesn't say to her what he did. He just says, "Oh yeah, I couldn't find it." And when you say that, she go- and I'm like, well, whatever, because it wasn't hers anyway. Then she says, oh, that was my grandfather's, and it was a family heirloom, so I was really hoping to find it. And I just sat there, and I think <laughs> Nier has, again, the flavor text of, did I fuck up? Did I fuck up? Spoiler alert, the answer is always yes. Exactly. When it's Nier, yes. Every, every choice you yeah. make is bad, and you should feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, it was like thing- I do. <laughs> Or I, I guess this is just side quest discussion now while we get, because there's not much going on in the middle of story A, uh, plant Lorade anyway. Yeah. Um, like uh, the other one that I could think of is the, um, when you're helping a father find his son and you have to go to all the different areas of the world map and eventually you convince the son to go back to his dad. But then the very and it's like oh and 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 like you know you keep finding out like oh where he's gone oh come on just go your work with your father in the family business it's okay and he goes oh, it's fine I guess I really got to stop running thank you for talking some sense into me you get back and the guy's gone and you're like oh well, maybe they just left a guard runs over and goes hey did you see a guy and his kid over here you go oh no why and he goes oh because this they apparently borrowed a bunch of money from everyone in town and then skipped town some idiot convinced the son to go back to his father so they could go into a life of crime even though he almost got out <laughs> and you're literally left with like, like we should have just never gotten involved <laughs> like i messed up i messed up also you're forgetting to bring up the couple oh which couple oh the the, the mainline one the, the yeah, boat dude oh the red bag couple oh who man. i didn't pick sides by the way I, I tried to not to pick sides because I'm like I ain't getting in the middle of this fucking thing. I'm like I ain't doing it. I'm like I am. I a was honest, year old boy. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what? One one that kind of broke life? my heart is uh, the the old man sends you to go find his dog, and the dog is was, dead. And yes. then you go back, and the old man is dead. And you're like, fuck, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's like, oh, a, like a classic. I was waiting for like people's reactions to that one. It was that. I, I did that one, and I was like, "Ouch!" You're like, "Oh my god, this is so bad." What about what about the one where you investigate a, de- a possible murder in facade, and then um, like you go to find the body, but there's no body, but there's blood, and you find the guy who admits to killing the person, but then you go where the body is hidden, and there's still no body, and then you come back, and she's just alive, and it's like and nothing. Like, oh Shut god. up. Fuck. That gave me so many chills for some yeah. weird as no reason. Because you're like, it's like that why yeah. that entire question like the piss out of me. Because again, blood was the same color as everything else. And people are yep. giving you like like like, oh, maybe it was here, maybe it's here. I've run it around for like a goddamn hour. I went through like two different podcasts. I had to, to look up a guide, it. even on the new version. <laughs> I had to look up a guide. I- I'm like, where the fuck is it? And then it's in this nondescript corner that's the same color as the floor, and you need to, like, get down to the ground and sniff it for the game to be like, there it is, and I'm like, no! <laughs> that that's, like, a setup for the second half of the game, where you have another quest of that, of, okay, hey, it's that same girl that we found that wasn't dead, let's go see what she's doing, and she's doing weird stuff, and you find out she's a shade, and that's why, because when she died, she did, she really did die, and a shade took possession of her body. Oh, it, it, I didn't even a, get that because I stopped doing side quests um, before oh, I, I before I guess like <laughs> uh, you get to like the second half uh, part two, whatever, whatever people want to call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I did like all the ones in Seafront and um, mm-hmm. Seaside. I forget what it's called. And uh, just the like the whole main village. fishing quest. I did. The yeah, whole I, I did quest. all of that. I, I caught did. so many fish. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess I should be honest. I just did the quest that gave me the weapons because I just at fine. that point I was That's like, well, so I did a fuck. Put those hands away, Jose. 
I did a fuck ton of side quest at first because what if people don't know killing enemies doesn't give you money not nah, bitch you gotta work and I and I was like god damn it so I was doing all these side quests I was like rolling in dough I didn't do any farming I was rolling in dough the game was just giving me money off the ground I was like hell yeah let's let's go and then I think it was Polygon had this amazing like spreadsheet of how to get every weapon in the game to help you yes i'm weak i used it don't laugh at me comment section i did it and it's like oh you need to do these three side quests or four i think it was four to get like the weapons that you needed and i went great and then the other weapons are like pony up 80k kid and i'm like oh, fuck it's I, like all I, right fine i find it hard to believe anyone did all that naturally without without consulting a guide but uh, yeah, sam i'm yeah, actually I, curious oh i'm sorry go ahead I was say I use the guide for the weapons. I I don't remember like the tiny specifics, and I'm like I don't want to go through this. And then Winners aren't out, afraid to use guides or easy mode, kids. Exactly. I also I also played on easy because I'm not gonna be frustrated playing one of my favorite games of all time. I'm gonna cruise <laughs> through, and yeah, I used the guide to make sure I got all the weapons. I don't want to go through, and then I'm like, oh no, I forgot this, and now I gotta start over. And yeah, I use the guide. Has anyone here actually done every single side quest? I've done all but one. No, I refuse to do the fishing one. I, I spent too much time too. on that. I have to go I'm... back and do the fucking flower one at some point because it's just oh, god. good luck. I, yeah. I will say going on the weapons thing, it's because it, like people see this, like get all the weapons in the game, it's a fucking short. It really isn't if you're doing the right things and doing the oh, side yeah side quest and making and making that dough and like knowing what you need to do and where everything is which again bless that polygon graph had the yeah. exact location of the boxes and where they drop like everything if you know what you're looking for and you're going for them it's honestly not hard now now like three-fourths of them aren't good so if you're like me you're gonna stick to that one i think halberd and you're like great i'm done i don't need anything else but it's like it's not a chore and that's what i think near does really really well is yes when you tell people oh you need to beat the game five times everyone's like oh ho, ho, not not for me it's like but it's honestly not that bad it's like getting all the really weapons not. Isn't hard. it feels like you're just it's one cohesive you're just playing through and you're like okay now here's the next part of the game and the next part and even with like the fetch quest and stuff i was talking about it when talking to my friends about it like it doesn't feel so terrible to walk back and forth a ton because no. like, the music's so good and like it plays well. And so I'm like, I'm fine with this. And also, I, I did that thing where I had pod podcasts going when I was doing the uh, side side stuff like I normally do. I didn't. I mean, it was annoying having to run back to the area, back to the library, back to the seaside, now back to this. And plus, I would just kill things along the way. So I would level up, get like get like items and stuff that i could sell if i needed more money could buy all my wolf wolf fanes i don't fucking need those like it, it, it was like i was doing stuff along the way and listening to podcasts or i actually had clems's videos on in the background while i was playing because i was like oh i mean this seems fitting fucking clems like yeah let's have these on while i'm doing all these side side stuff and yeah it's annoying but again if you have a guide if you know what you're looking for Getting all the weapons, I think, only took me not even a couple of hours. Because, like, okay, I know the ones that drop, and I know the ones I need to buy, and when they unlock, and which shops have them, and stuff like that. And I think that's what stops a lot of people from playing this and do doing all the endings, is because people don't... I don't really see anywhere online saying finding all the weapons isn't that hard. And maybe I'm just not looking in the right places, but, like, no one ever really says, hey... Finding all the weapons isn't isn't that bad. Like it's it may I, seem I, like a task, but it's not it's not terrible. I think it I depends think I on be, how you're playing it. I, yeah, I think I might be like the odd card. one out in that. Um, e even if you kind of know what you're doing, you're looking up guides and everything. I I don't think having um that that amount of fluff, whether it's grinding out side quests, you don't necessarily want to be doing, or you don't want to be farming. I, I don't think having to get all the weapons or even necessarily going through chunks of the same um, same areas, same story moments for multiple playthroughs that don't necessarily have new contexts. Um, it, it doesn't actively add to the game. I wouldn't even say neutral. I'd, I'd say it harms. Like if it was a leaner product, I think it it'd be overall better. But um, yeah, I, I guess I'm the odd one out on that. <laughs> I 
want to use that as a jumping off point because I mean, speeding through the the rest of the first, like you know, you meet Emil in his mansion and he's an experiment, and you become sure. like a surrogate, like older brother to him. You um, you keep going back and forth. You meet. Uh, I think we should designate some time to talk about uh, Eloise is her name, right? Or uh, in the sh- in the in the sunken ship, the uh, mermaid. Uh, yeah. Louise. I think it's Louise. Yes, Louise. The thank new you. Content. Yeah. The, um, the new I, content. I wanna. I want us to talk about that as its own thing, maybe uh, at some point soon. But um, uh, I, I'm not forget. So you go through the first the first playthrough of the game to the end of A, and you basically learn like, oh, you learn you whatever you you learn pretty much. Not everything is what you thought it was. Um, number one, this is while it is kind of feels like a fantasy jrpg it also just has its grounds in sci-fi things like uh the robots in the junk heap uh things like just details like oh you know that an apocalypse happened based on the prologue and based on what devil and popola share with you um the fact that that the shades have varying sizes and things and you just you pick up on little details the final conflict where the shadow lord shows up and he looks a lot like your main character and has a book of his own that looks a lot like the book from the prologue and takes your sister away. You start the second half of the game of, I need to get my sister back. You're in full like traditional JRPG mode or Japanese. You could just say Japanese media story. I need to go save woman because plot. Or also emo boy. 100% also emo boy. Emo, emo boy. I, like, I will s- when I mean emo, I mean like Linkin Park in the background. Like this, like this boy is like is that this boy's a man like Absolutely. he's a very angry emo man like long yeah. hair i love this design better than like tiny brother near by the way like i love this design mm-hmm. i hated brother near so bad. Oh, i think we are we can all agree like, there yeah like, oh. was so what were annoying. you gonna like, say like, oh, Jose? oh i don't think we have to go far too down the uh the rabbit hole for just like what people prefer whether it's a uh, papa near or brother near but like especially yeah. the time gap works so much better as brother near because you know there's that it big does. visual growth different design it's not underwear on his face it hits Leave you harder. Leave Papineer alone. Why are you so mean to him? Oh my god. No our Lord and Savior Papineer slander here. No, thank you. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Me and Sarah like have had this disagreement a few times now and it never gets old. It never does. Which, okay, can we just point out that Papineer is in this game in the like weird challenge dungeon? Yeah. Game, yeah which is yeah, fun. Like, the DLC. His voice again. I almost cried. Yeah, save. I was like, oh, it's so good. I was like, daddy's yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. In fact, he's like, oh, nothing. It feels like I was having a dream or something. Like, it, implying like, oh, that too. they're experiencing each other as, I guess, as, like, separate timelines or something. Poor um, fucking Weiss is like, oh, my God, what just happened? Like, Weiss is literally. Like, oh, boy. It's like, oh, I had a weird dream just touching that book. You were an old man. <laughs> Can we I'm touch give- on how fucked up Emil's background is? Like, when you, when you go back to him in Route B, he has information. And just, like, yeah. that entire mansion, the music is so... Fucking creepy and disturbing. All of a sudden, it's you got uh, Resident, Resident Evil. Evil stuff. Yeah, 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 you got oh, yeah, Resident yeah. Evil stuff, right? The like fixed like cameras and the like yes. weird like walkie. Ooh, it's so good. Every, everything's all turned to stone. He froze all the people. It, we it's, also it's so should good. point out that a lot of the background in near it has that early 2000 JRPG thing where a lot of it was in audio diary or short novels that only came out in Japan. So yeah. like while you get some of them, some of Emil's backstory in the game, you need to search out like some of the audio dramas and some of the weird novels that they put out to get all of it, which can be kind of annoying. And I'm I'm just gonna show Clemps this entire time. Someone like Clemps actually goes through everything and it's really helpful. But like you can also find these yourself. Like the Near fandom has translated everything to where you can just read it online but that's the one issue with the lore that i have of this game and automata does it too <laughs> stage plays multiple of them um yes. <laughs> it's just very like, no more esque like hey you want to know the full story there's literally. eight million different mediums that you have and to they're dive all into. canon yeah, yeah like, and it doesn't help that because Emil's backstory super sci-fi, hella interesting. Like child child soldiers trying to stop Red Eye and do all this stuff. I promise these words make sense, by the way. Like trying to stop all of all of this stuff. It's like it's kind of like Halo. It's like oh, sorry, who's this really important Red Eye person that we're bringing up? You gotta read like three novellas and listen to like two different audio dramas. It's it's so 
I don't want to say annoying, but it does that thing where it like dangles all the good shit in front of it's you. And then just swipes it up and it's like, here, Google this five different things and find this like fan trans. You gotta do the homework. Yeah. You yeah, gotta basically do homework. Helpful. I wish it was yeah. all in one place or like do some kind of remaster collection or similar to Kingdom Hearts where they're like, we're gonna kind of pull as much as we can into one collection and then release it 15 times, which would be fine, but like just which, something. Yeah, which we should also point out, and you might notice this if you play through it. I didn't, I don't remember if this was in the base game. Blaine, did you tell me it was some of the loading screens instead of being uh, your sister's diary seem to be like diary entries from scientists, people in the past that is like, hey, yeah. dragon fell from the sky and red eye was spotted here and we started testing people with this book. Like it goes into it. I want to say there. that those get them often. Yeah, I want to say that they show up at fixed points, but what yeah. you see isn't necessary is randomized. And I think you can also sometimes I think you can sometimes see them when you're not supposed to, but I have never gotten confirmation. I have gotten some in random like changes to the open world. I've gotten them, same but I've here, gotten like yeah. copies. Yeah. I've gotten like the same mm -hmm. ones over and over. And I know they did add some new ones, obviously. Mm -hmm. The one where they're like, hey, there was someone named Accord that came to yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my god, I know when I saw uh, that. Yes. I was like, hold on. I'm like, hold on. Yeah. Like, I, I talked about her. I'm going to assume anyone listening to this has either played near Replicant or is invested enough to kind of not care. Like, Accord is a character that I know is is in Dragon Guard 3. But like, is technically in all of the Near and Drakengard games because she's in both universes. Yeah, so she's like the, uh, the record keeper type. She can character. time travel and dimension exactly. travel and this shit. Mm -hmm. And just the so, fact like, that it's casually brought up and like, yeah. people don't yeah. think of, oh, this woman came to town and she had a bag that had a lot of things. Her name was like Cord. I like, I slammed my fist down. I was like, bitch, where is she? Yeah, same here. It's like when they touch on an automata, like a character says it in passing, like, oh, there's someone named Accord, like selling weapons. And I'm like, find a file. It's like a flyer for her shop or something. <laughs> Accord? No, like, okay, Drakengard? Um, Jose, if I may, to like refocus us. Um, yeah, yeah, to go back to, I, I just want to touch uh, on Emil's thing because it, it stands yeah, up, I, it stands as like such a fucked up point. Because like when you see him in, in uh, the first part, just like, oh yeah, he has to like, restrain himself he has to wear a blindfold so he doesn't freeze everything to stone so it's like it's already this tragic tale and then you go into the entire like research facility like his entire life was basically a lab rat he had like got a sister that, i don't know if all the other kids really do I don't, I don't believe so no but no, then no. and his they sister weren't. gets turned into this big freaking monster skeleton and it's oh it is so fucked up like like most of this is is told via just text you don't get to see too much yeah. of it and Man, I I don't even know how to properly describe beyond just like if you thought Emil had had like a tragic background before, this is like a whole other level of fucking fucked up shit going in, on in yeah. a game that's main again that's main themes seem to be to expect the unexpected. Like these characters aren't exactly who you think they are. Um, Emil's I think is one of the few that even though he may do some bad things. I can never think of a situation where I'm like, he shouldn't like, like where you can blame him. He's one of the few characters that I'm like, I, I feel like honestly he's cause he's still mentally a child, not in an ableist way, quote unquote, got the mind of a child, but like he literally never emotionally progressed past like being like a 12 year old or 13 year old. He's very smart, but he is not an adult. Um, even though he is like literally a thousand years old. Um, and you, Sarah, I'm getting a little bit of echo on your end. Okay, good. We're good. Sorry. No, no, no. You're good. Sorry. Um, it was just throwing me off a little bit. Um, and you, you could look into how, like, he didn't ask for any of this to happen to him. Like you were alluding to Jose, um, him and his sister were essentially tortured and turned into weapons. He has to bring his sister down. He has to take, then take her into his body. So it's like, okay, at least you in some way have each other. Um, and they do that with other cutscenes and stuff. But like, you think of everything he goes through, including the fact that while trying to save his friends, he ends up destroying the Aerie, killing a bunch of innocent people. Like, well, he and, also and, destroys his own body too. That that's how it gets the image. Yeah, it happens him. later. Yeah. That's yeah. the saddest yeah. part. Yeah, it, it's like heartbreaking because you're like this poor like I always say like this poor sweet boy. 
Like he didn't act, like you said, he didn't act I can't watch that this. scene without crying. No, I can't. he's so he's so innocent and like every time he cries, like it makes me cry because I'm like, no. And then I always like bring it back real quick to a Tom and I'm sure if you guys have gotten to the the fight with Emil and he's like, you know, I'm doing this for my friends and he talks about Kaine and it's like, oh no, I can't handle this. <laughs> oh, I didn't get I didn't do that. Is that the side quest with the flowers? <laughs> yes I okay i never did that oh, one i was okay. it's fine i was avoiding <laughs> like looking it up because i was like i knew it was something to do with him oh and if you want to cry then you can do it or watch <laughs> go watch a playthrough <laughs> uh, no, i'm gonna have to play it definition yeah. of a good bean like a meal yes. is literally a good bean like, just through through and through bean. you're like he doesn't do anything <laughs> bad on purpose he does his best mm-hmm. and then the bad things like, happen literally. he's like why and i'm like it's not your fault it, it's even so is, funny when he he's just like no sorry i say characters are good are good beans a lot and i say that jokingly like i think i said on twitter earlier like aiden pierce is a good bean he's not a good bean i'm saying it jokingly <laughs> but like but like a meal is like when i say a good bean like he's a good bean like that that boy has done nothing wrong and the game just likes to point him in his little skeleton face and it's like ha 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 and it's like no like you've done nothing wrong and like just this whole game, you want to protect him, but the game's like, but he killed innocent people, and you're like, but I still want to protect him, and the game's like, oh, but he can't come into town, but he loves spending the night with Kaine out under the stars. It's like, it's, in a game where a lot of the people are just, and I say this like, not saying like everyone's a bad person, but they do a they bad thing. They are. Like, <laughs> everyone is objectively a bad person. Emil yeah. has that shining ray of sun of like sunshine. That's like Emil's done nothing wrong. I will protect him. But the game does everything to like destroy the opposite. Him. Yeah, and you're like, <laughs> leave him alone. <laughs> like, please stop. Like, it's- I always say he did exactly one thing wrong, and it wasn't his fault. Yeah, yeah. it's also a nice contrast. Like when he's. When because uh, oh, they're spending so much time when he's spending so much time with Nier and Kaine, that when he eventually does swear, you're like, "Whoa, chill out, Emil. It's all good, <laughs> dude." It, it, it's like Seniors, he's a baby. Exactly. Um, I mean, and so to to bring it back to to bring back the focus. So, I mean, you get to the end of Route A, and it's essentially you know Nier has completely spiraled in trying to get his sister back. He's met, and I'm, I'm not even mentioning the Prince of Facade, but and the King of Facade. But you know, he makes a friend in the King of Facade, and wolves or wolves attack and whatnot. And I'll, we'll get into the implications of that when we get into discussing the routes and everything, but and the changes. But um, you know, like you watch someone, and and you kind of are playing this, going, wondering in the back of your mind, I'm doing the right thing, right? This is your typical JRPG Japanese, almost like shonen style. Like I'm the hero. I'm doing the right thing. I'm saving my sister. But there's still that nagging feeling of, but what if I'm not? And then you finish the game, and it gives you your ending. But the fact that like you can see these moments where the Shadow Lord is clearly talking. But there's no subtitles. But it's clearly he's talking. And this also happens, I think, with every... If I remember correctly, with every boss fight uh, at some point in the second half of Route A. And it's part of what makes you have that nagging feeling. Is it weird if my first point of comparison is fucking... Every time he talks like a to like an ancient being in Wind Waker, you don't know what the fuck they're saying unless you're wearing pajamas. And then you can see everything they're Wait, fucking what? saying. I missed something. <laughs> Lord Jabu Jabu actually says coherent shit. No, no, I even I never beat when uh, pajamas. Yeah, pajamas. If, if you play New Game Plus, you play in your pajamas. You don't get you, you get the tunic, but it's invisible. I mean, That's I've really? heard of the whole like Ganondorf with the with the fishing rod, but d- 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 pajamas. That's <laughs> I didn't know that, and that's fantastic. But also, I wanted to pop in Blaine and go, when you feel like something's bad, and then the Always Sunny music plays, and you're like, oh no! Literally. <laughs> the do 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 That's when it like, starts Wait. to, like you said, like kind of in the back of your mind, it's like hinting at, hey, there's, there's some other stuff going on here. There's more to this than what you think there is. And you're like, huh. One of the and biggest then, moments... Oh, sorry. Same I'll just gonna say, then you progress, and you're like, oh no. Yeah, one of the biggest moments I feel that really hits you with too, like maybe I'm not doing the right thing, is when you meet Devil and Popola and realize that they've been betraying you the whole time. But 
they also are like they seem genuinely upset that they have to fight you and they keep alluding to the fact that like they've had to do this before like this is not the first time something like this is ha- it's almost like a, a matrix matrixy situation like this isn't the first time a quote unquote the one has appeared and all this other stuff but you've mm-hmm. just managed to surpass everything that's ever been put to stop like whoever and in the that leads up to what is still my favorite moment in the entire game is when you're fighting devil and Popola before Emil sacrifices himself to save everyone. Um, and you first kill Popola. No, no, sorry. You kill devil. And as Popola is dying, as, as uh, Popola, damn it. As devil is dying in Popola's arms and she dies near then reaches out. And is like, let's, let's stop all this. Let's just go back to the village. Let's, let's let all this go. And, Popola says one of the most relatable things I've ever heard an antagonist say is just like, you think I have, I mean, I think they changed it in the, uh, the new translation, but I remember the line being like, do you think I have the luxury to stop? Um, it's yeah, they did change it, but it's, it's still, I think it's just like, do you think we have the luxury to stop or something like that? Yeah. It still hits really hard though. It does. Like that's when she just kind of is unhinged at that point. Cause she's like, no, I, and it may, and it confronts the player. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's just it's like such a beautiful thing that Nier does with those couple different characters. I know uh, Gideon, the younger Yuri, Lewenthal brother. Just like when when a character snaps in Nier, like they fucking snap. Yeah, and it's 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 really freaky to see. And I also think that that fight is a good use of the music, like hearing both the version that has Devola and Popola s- singing at the same time, which you only mm-hmm. do if you do that specific side quest where like Popola gets fucking hammered and you're like, oh, cool. This is a wonderful song. I'm just going to sit here. And then it plays during that fight. And you're like, no. Mm-hmm. And it has like some like crazy meanings behind it. Exactly. Unlike the Barb version mm-hmm. does. And it's like, it's, it turns a beautiful song into like the song of like, oh, this person I've loved and cared for and has been like a mom to me literally wants to rip me in half. Yeah. And I'm not a high enough level for this. And it's like, oh God, I'm going to do it. It's like pain it's- and despair. I have a question yeah. actually. When Emil sacrifices himself, what's up with the, uh, the, the transition back to like uh, modern day buildings? Uh, it's just a change of location. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it's the implication that I guess that the Shadow Lord always stayed in that like area. Um, I've seen different interpretations that some believe that it's like a magical teleporter elevator, um, and that and it's like a barrier. I personally just think if you look at the way the buildings are around the Lost Shrine, um, it's not too hard to extrapolate that you could go up in an elevator and then end up maybe like in a in a skyscraper. But um, like, like honestly, I kind of chalked it up to where I think like a lot of JRPGs kind of go this route. Like once you reach like the final location or whatever, the actual geography of nothing fucking makes sense like at all. So like I was just kind of willing to say, oh yeah, it's just JRPG shit. I mean, you live in a you live in in an area where there's a desert biome right next to a temperate biome next to a forest biome next to a mountain but like none of it makes sense you're not actually it's it's almost like dark souls 2 syndrome even though i like dark souls 2 a lot um so birds are not real (laughs) what (laughs) birds are not real (laughs) don't do do chickens i don't know what you're referencing The birds, the birds that are like answer all questions, and it's like all oh, the birds yeah. are not real. Well, those birds yeah. aren't real, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're those like birds. the first tease at like what's really going on before oh, yeah. Devil and Popola like literally just give you here's some documents explaining yeah. everything. And you know what? Let's use that as a jumping off point. So you've saved your sister, and it's like, oh, and we'll live our lives together. And you see young Nier again, and young uh, Yona, his sister. I realized I never said his sister's name this whole time. Young Yona is sitting next to him, and it's like, happily ever after, but very clearly something is not right. And you get to see the pullout, I think, of like the Shadow Lord and other Yona that you don't know who she is yet. And that brings us into so what you on playthrough two. What is everything? It turns out that when you kill the Shadow Lord and you let whatever that other Yona is go off, pass off into death, that you have doomed all of the replicants or whatever. The because I yeah because the replicants are actually. Like do you want to get into that a little bit? A little bit about that. Like what is replicant? What, what is their gestalt? That's what I'm trying to do. Um, 
I, I for always forget the actual terminology itself. I know that Devil and Popola are androids because they even say like, "How come you guys don't age like the rest of us?" And they're like, <laughs> "Shut the fuck up, Nier! <laughs> don't ask me that question, you stupid peach? idiot! Aren't you a peach? Why are you flattering me? Oh no!" <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, they're androids. They don't age. They're the same androids as the androids in Automata. Um Nier and his villagers and all the quote unquote humans of um of this of what's left in this, I guess, of this humanity are not humans. They even tell you in the cutscene there's no humans anymore. Um they are essentially again I don't want to get into the terminology because I genuinely don't remember unless you can look it up, uh Jose. But I know because I know Gestalt is one thing, replicant is another thing. Mm-hmm. But um, I, um, I can break it down real quick. Basically, a replicant is um, the, the, the the I can't English hard bad language. Well, um, here, like, me, a, a, a soul is basically like the soul of a human, like extracted, and they've turned into shades. After a while, they go. I forget the terminology. The relapse. Well, they go gestalt. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and because th- like the replicants were supposed to be like the shells for the human souls to go into. They developed their own consciousness and were like, no. And the replicants yeah. are mm-hmm. the people that we've been playing as. That's that's what yeah. I needed to get straight in my head. So mm-hmm. as Sam just pointed out, basically you realize that you've been playing as a clone human that's not even supposed to have a soul or a consciousness. They somehow developed it just by existing and that is the crux of the entire game's plot is like, you know, it's like every one of Taro's games, like what is, what is, a, a, what is the soul? What is human? Humanity, what is, et cetera. What is it exactly? It's like conceptually yeah. and literally. And, um, honestly, I kind of wish the game went a little bit harder into letting the characters actually deal with that themselves. Like to talk it out. Yeah. Just like, wow, this situation is fucked up. Like, I can see why Shadow Lord's doing whatever, whatever. L- l- let's discuss the real moral dilemma. Like, it- it's definitely, it exists more so for uh, you, the player, versus the characters. Characters don't really deal with those ramifications too much. No, yeah, they I mean, they tried to do that with the Black Scroll, which is the whole idea of you never really have free will to begin with because replicants were meant to be home for for. Gestalt? I don't even know how to pronounce that fucking word. Gestalt? To be, like, they were meant to be houses. They were meant yeah. to be houses for the shades, which are the humans. Otherwise, they go gestalt and they go berserk. Yeah, and then which is why the replicant bodies develop the black scroll because they're yeah. meant to have gestalts in them. But if they don't have them in them, the black scroll happens. Which the black scroll, the like letters on the black scroll actually translate to the compounds of DNA. I guess so. It's meant to be like oh uh, again. Thank you, Clem. So I've never known that. Uh, Correct, again, it's um, be like, oh, you never have free will to begin with because you were meant to be a host for this thing. Because you're meant to be host for this thing, and you did the terrible thing of developing a free will and a conscience. This is what's going to happen to everyone eventually. Yeah, because like, yeah. break down by <laughs> defeating the Shadow Lord and making sure that no shade will ever find its home in a replicant. Everyone, every replicant will eventually get the black scrawl and die, and humanity is cursed to die. And that's Correct. a bad end. That's cool. Co- correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the black scroll also um, it begins developing if someone's uh, corresponding gestalt gets prematurely killed. So whenever Kaine is going around yeah. killing people, kill, I'm sorry, killing uh, gestalts on the field, yes. that's just spreading the black scroll uh, exponentially Basically. faster. Yeah. Basically, yeah. It, 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 it's. And it's why, like, I I believe, again, this is me making an inference, but I think that's why there's the implication of, oh, this isn't the first time this has happened, because there have probably been a bunch of Nears that are the replicants of the Shadow Lord, and they've just fucked up over and over again mm-hmm. for however many, like, thou- you know, a thousand years, however long it's been. And, um, I- yeah, I, I, here, Jose, do you want me to use this as a jumping point to get into, like, Kaine, Tiran, and seeing the perspective of the Shades? Or did you yeah. want to say something else? Yeah, it, basically along those lines, like c- because Kaine is, is by far the most interesting person in this game to me, and I almost kind of wish, um, how's it pronounced? Ty- Tyran, Tyrane? I think Tyran. Tyran. I think it's Tyran. Yeah, or Ty. I pronounced it Tyran. Yeah, I call him, like, I call him Tyran, but I know she says it. I think um, she says it Tyran, but I can't remember off the top. I of my head. think he also. So- 
says it during one of the ending fights. Like Nier's you like, who's right. you? And he's like, it's me. And you're like, yeah. But don't worry about that. I'm gonna That's help you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Your friend, well, whatever. Like, who says it? It's just literally escaping me. Like I don't know why. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure it's T Rod. Yeah. Well, but anyway, anyway, um, I almost wish that there wasn't. Um, I don't necessarily want to call it contrivance, but just for your discussion, I wish there wasn't that contrivance between Kaine and uh, uh, just going to say Tyran, uh, Tyran, where if if she feels too bad about what she's doing or she feels happiness, like he'll take over and then just like bad shit's going to go down because e- even in ending a you you pick up on Kaine is able to understand what the bit what all the gestalts are saying, especially the. Uh, the boar that you're facing that just won't fucking die. It has like millions yeah. of lives or whatever. And I'm just like, wait, kind of, you, you seem to be like very aware of like what's actually going on in the world. And then once you figure out like, oh yeah, this, she's killing people. And then she literally, but when she opens the door and there's a big old slapstick, like, oh, look at all these orbs falling on you. That's funny. Right. And it's, and it's all fucking babies. <laughs> And you're she like, kills so, him down. I'm just like, Kaine, I mean, you're you're kind of fucked it, up, dude. Which is par for the course for any, you know, near slash Drake and guard. Oh, you, well, you gotta kill children? Normal. You're either <laughs> eating children or you're killing them. Oh it's my just, god. Just, I, I was or, waiting for someone or, to bring part of that up. Or yeah. the children are eating you. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Normal. Don't worry about it. Because I, I feel like with with the Tyran stuff, like it makes sense. Like, yes, Kaine can't like come to grips with uh, what she's actually doing and whatnot. But I kind of wish that plot detail wasn't there so that she can try to justify it somehow. Because then it kind of like just hand waves it. But- I mean, they do they do attempt at what you're talking about. I feel like, and when you do hear her say like, "Shut up, shut up," they're just shades. They're just shades. Like, there's yeah. a few times where she does say that, but. I see what you're saying that that's not necessarily enough to convince you that if you're reading into this as deeply as we are. Um, uh, that being said, um, yeah, like I, I, the game, it's funny. The game basically does the thing that I always mock uh, Spec Ops the line for doing, which is the whole like we're going to make you do this thing and then shame you for doing it later, even though you had no choice. Um, where you find out that you've been literally killing children, you've been killing uh, non-combatants. You, they're like. I think one of the one of the most interesting things about that whole thing is that, like in the very beginning of the game, the first encounter you have with shades are the children's shades, and they do not attack you. And the game will not progress unless you attack them. And it's and it's the same thing that happened in Automata, where you can just ch- choose to stand there and not fight Eve. I'm sorry, not fight Adam, and um, Adam will not attack you until you attack him. And it just creates this whole, you know, it's this whole thing of like, it's a contrivance, but I I feel like these contrivances are worth it if there's something more to be said that it's trying to tell you. And I think this game, while it slips up here and there, it accomplishes a lot in that, like getting you kind of acknowledge, like, have you ever, have you ever thought about this perspective in JRPGs? Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about maybe this villainous force you're facing is almost justified in why they're attacking you like when you find out that yeah you've been killing children and that's what like starts the conflict you essentially took the first shot and that's why the shades start like attacking the village more and more and attack the workers it's like a domino effect the fact that halfway through the game they have an all-out attack it's like but yeah but they're taking vengeance just the same way you were it's just perspective Mm -hmm. which is what route b is all about exactly and it's like hard gaming slightly getting into like I guess Ruby and stuff is when the whole you lose Fira and you know everyone's heartbroken. It's one of the mm-hmm. saddest points in the game, and then you find out like the wolves were justified, mm-hmm. but you're heartbroken because you're like Fira didn't do anything wrong, but you're also like the wolves didn't do anything wrong, and so you're exactly. drunk. You're like I'm just sad about all of this, and like Rock is my favorite uh, shade or Gestalt boss. Because it just kills me every time. I'm like, no, he was like, he was someone's pet, and then they took their homeboy. No, <laughs> like literally, like like all kills of them got every me. time. Yeah, all of them got to me pretty hard. But like, yeah, Rock just especially just like he's just a good doggo, and he gets to go back to his owner. That's that's yeah. that's cool. And he's like, like oh, you look back on their fight. 
there's a re- like he's 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 easy to beat because he's been fighting for so long that he's weakened himself because he's like oh mm-hmm. I have to, I have to finish my mission I do this but he's yeah. one of the easiest boss fights in part two and looking back on it that's probably because he's been fighting for so long he's incredibly weak he has like arrows sticking out of his back like he's easy and he jumps around a lot because he knows that he would be an easy kill. But he's just trying to get his job done, and you're just there, just like not knowing this at the, the, the first time around. The second you're just time, angry because like, you're like, happened. "We gotta kill the wolves. They killed Fira. How dare you?" And then you're Literally. like, "I don't want to kill the wolves." Happen. And you see the nice old man. That yes, like I missed it, you, and I just sat there and I went, "God damn it!" Yes, and it's mm. so sad because then, like, Rock talking about, like, you know, the humans came and they, it's like the Princess Mononoke, they killed the forest and they were killing our children i was just gonna bring that up because white <laughs> has a throwaway line of like what are a bunch of who's their near says like what are all these wolves doing in the desert that makes no exactly sense forest. and then rock's whole thing is like they destroyed the forest so you're this, this breaking up a little bit yeah, keep... oh so we sorry am i still speeding up, <laughs> it was set up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah even I, on, on uh I ending still weird or good? I, I think you're good now i think you're good yeah Okay, you go on, Jose. Yeah, even even on ending B, you you get that new cutscene of um before the wedding starts, um and anything, the the king's guards or whatever, uh they go out of their way to just like preemptively kill wolves, like they instigated the entire attack during the wedding, like yes. it is entirely their fault. And not just wolves, they specify like like they said like oh they were children, they were pups. Yes, and I'm like, mm. no, I don't want to fight them. I don't want to fight the wolves. Don't make me do this. And, and even with Should the, we get uh, into the Gretel the, fight, oh, where um, where he's he's just like screaming, like, "Please stop killing my friends! Stop!" Yes. Doing it. No, yeah. literally, because you have to drag them into the sunlight in order to get him to stop shielding himself. But it's yeah. like, yeah, because he's they're because you're killing children and he can't handle it because he's been protecting them. Can, can um, we talk about our boy BP? Oh no! Yes, we need to talk about BP. Or, uh, BP, please, BP. <laughs> Where, where baby brother <laughs> Yuri Lowenthal, he like he has this entire conception that BP somehow killed his brother, even though like he was nowhere near. It and always so makes just, me yeah. angry because I'm like, you killed your brother. It was your fault. Even in the cutscene, <laughs> even in the cutscene before in round A, like you don't, you can see enough to be like that robot wasn't anywhere near. It was just over there. Mm-hmm. I didn't intentionally make that pun. Um, and also, like, and, really and, quick, and, BP's also the connection to all automata. BP does is mentioned in Automata when it tells the story of the ro- robot that wanted to see the sun but was able to see the sun, which is oh my uh, god, I didn't know that. Friend. Yeah, so oh, that makes me cry. So, uh, the robot who wanted to see the uh, the sun was BP's friend. He does end up getting out, but then he dies as soon as he gets out. So it's like oh, he was, man. and then he, I guess it, he's considered like the god of the robots in Automata, I think. They consider him one of, one of their like gods because he was able to see the outside and he taught that them. Tracks. Huh? That, no, I said that tracks. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like he taught them how to care and how to love one another because of BB. It's like these, uh, if yeah. we ever do that, if we ever do a spoiler cast on Automata, um, I'm gonna have to just be like, I'm Sorry gonna have to, to be like, hey, so happiness, but <laughs> well, no, 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 I'm gonna have to be like, hey, so also here's why every character in that game is trans, but we're not gonna get into that right now. Um, but, uh, Jose, we gotta talk about BP. Yeah, just to go back a little bit. Um, so yeah, the brother gets the completely wrong idea from that. He actually yanks his brother's arm off and he cuts his own arm off to like simulate it. It's, I forgot uh, about that. Like, he, yeah. I, always, I, I never put that together that he and he intentionally cut his own arm off. I always assumed it was like, Same. I always assumed he just got in an accident, like in between there in the interim. No, not that he was being emo. Strange. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> like he, I he's he's like BB did, was like, is he okay? Like, people yes. in the shade no, were like, no, no, no. are they okay? Should we help them? Like, they did nothing wrong. The fact that in the boss fight, like when you first fight him, you think he's throwing debris at you to like kill you, but it's not. He's trying to rip a hole in the ceiling because he just wants to save his little friend. And like even and then his, his little away. friend, the, the the shade's mom, like died trying to like make enough time for her baby to escape. 
Exactly. And then, he, then he's all alone. He makes friends with BP, and they're like best friends. And you just you just slaughter both of them for no fucking reason. Literally and even no reason. <laughs> when Gideon runs out and he just starts kicking the fucking dead robot, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Nier is just like, hey, buddy, d- yeah, dial it, it down a notch. Yeah, coming from Nier of all people who also hates shades with a passion. Even he's like, like, I don't know about this one, bud. Yeah, he's like, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you stop. off, Sam. I'm no, sorry. No, that's what it was. It's just like, you might want to chill out a little bit there. And I'm it's like, just, okay, agreed, but you have no room to talk near because the same. It's the embodiment of just like Hank Hill was that boy ain't right. <laughs> Yuri Lowenthal, he voices uh, 9S also, right? I think so, yeah. Does a great yeah, job. He, he's very good at no, doing a psychotic someone break. Someone else that does 9S. I can't remember his name. Oh, it's oh okay. Is it, uh, yeah, my bad. Yuri, I think Yuri Lowenthal is Adam or Eve. I think you're right. I'm you think he up. might be Adam, Adam or Eve? Because I know someone else plays Nine S, but I know Yuri Lowenthal. You are is, right. It is, is uh, Kyle McCarley. Yes, yes. Kyle, because Kyle's incredibly talented, and we will bring him up later too. We will. <laughs> we, we, he went Freeman back. Adam. Huh. I think Crispin Freeman was Adam, but now I can't remember. I know Yuri Lowenthal is either Adam or Eve. Like, I'm 99% sure. I that think he, he might be Eve. I'll, I'll, someone will correct me at some point. We're all, trying but, uh, to, to, we're all trying to be like, hold, we got this, we're looking. They should have just um, had Troy Baker voice everybody. Oh my god. Troy Baker Fucking, and Nolan North. Yeah. Troy Baker and Nolan North just voice everything. Um, uh, Ray just Chase. like it charted for. <laughs> Ray Chase is Eve. Okay. Ray Chase is Eve. Um, Greg um, Chun well, is Adam. Okay, I was way no, off. I thought you were alone and thought was it all time. Unless he's one of the like NPCs, which I wouldn't be surprised. He might be. Where I did I get Crispin Freeman he's from? Like he has everything. A you know, even if it's like a small thing. But anyway, Blaine, if you want to go ahead. Yeah, um, I was going to say, so do we have any more we wanted to say about BP before I get to the next thing? Beep. BP's a good boy. Uh, you're fucked up for killing him. Yeah. Yeah. Near, we all got to bear that. Um, so I thought this was a good. I mean, because we, we, we've talked about pretty much everything. I mean, we could go into the tree, but I mean, we're going to talk about that with ending E anyway. So maybe yeah, we can say that as like a footnote. Um, so you get to Luis, and, who is essentially just a sea monster in a ghost ship who is eating people. And that's your whole encounter with her the first time. And then I, if I remember correctly, like through every, and this I think is also why I would say to people, like you got to play every ending, not just watch a playthrough. Because if I correct me if I'm wrong, every playthrough, her dialogue is more and more coherent until the point yes. where you can actually hear exactly what she's saying. Mm-hmm. There's also voice by Aaron Fitzgerald. Yeah. yeah. And you have to, which I don't remember which route it is where, uh, you're doing the boss fight and you can't uh, kill her all the way because it just mm-hmm. stops. Then there's the last yeah, point where you fight her me. and you actually do get to defeat her. You get to like jump up and you get a different cutscene than you normally yeah. would. So it's like, yeah. You that's have, route, you route B, you don't defeat her. Route C, you do. Yeah, route, that's what it was. Route you should bring B, up that this is new content. Like, this, this is new content. Different. Oh, that, that um, particular piece is new content? It is. Yeah, oh, it okay. was. It was like just a like a written story initially, um, for Grimoire Near, and then they decided to actually make it into the game, which is really cool. I'm glad they did. I, I will say, based based off the um the Ma- Emil's mansion, and then also just the the lead up to this boss battle, where you're going through the ghost ship, and then you stumble across the bodies. I would fucking love if Yoko Taro just made a straight up horror game. I, oh, I think he'd great. be so fucking good at it. I It'd would do that like, too. Horror game, but also really sad. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see. I only my, the only thing is part of me is like I would like him to maybe have just at least another writer on with him to kind of hold him back on stuff that he doesn't need to be so extra on. But I don't know if yeah. that's gonna happen. Is Yoko uh, Taro actually the secret creative director behind Blue Box Studios working? I'm on gonna Silent punch Hill? you in the face <laughs> through I the internet. Out that Yoko Taro produced a 
a iPhone game called Sino Alice that kind of has like horror elements to it. Oh yeah, it, it's like it, yeah. it delves more into the use of like fairy tale characters that he did in Near, but it's actually a whole game based around that. Uh, there, there is conflicting rumors whether Sino Alice is related to Near because there is the old ancient Ooh. language in Sino Alice, the same that's in Near and Near Automata. It's always it's something like some tiny little connection somehow. Yeah. And it's going to be like, okay, so the next game, full game based off Sino Alice. Yeah. Like, what? From what I could gather, I played it. I played it during quarantine. Same. During yeah. Quarantine, so I kind of just sat in bed and was just like, doo, 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 doo. but like from what I could gather from it, there's no insane subtle connection to Near in it. But it's Yoko Taro doing horror style imagery using like cute anime girls designed around fairy tale characters. Because it's like even in the loading screens, it's just the ancient language from here. Like that's all it is. Yeah, like, oh, and I think that's what he had initially wanted to do before doing. Um, it was either near a Dragon Guard. I don't know if it was the very beginning. Um, I remember reading about it where he wanted to do a game with like fairy tale characters, but horror-esque yeah and then he wasn't able to do that he did drake and guard slash near instead and so it was interesting seeing sinolas come out and i'm like oh that was his like one of his original ideas that he had that he didn't get to do and now he got to do it which is cool plus it's actually Magic. really good it's actually a lot of fun it, it has really pretty art and hey. it, oh it's gorgeous it's, and the music is, is micro- good yes oh god <laughs> not to cut y'all short transaction but- nightmare though please do not spend over 20 dollars on that game <laughs> because i did <laughs> Oh, please don't. It's too late. Not, <laughs> when Sarah's telling you not to spend money, you know it's serious. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, because she's the one. I'm usually like the one who makes fun of people doing microtransactions, but then y'all can just make fun of me because I spent money on Siege recently. But. To hell. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> Blaine, tell us but, about um, the butt. The butt. The big butt. Um, well, wait, because we were we were talking about the different perspectives of um, things, and you know, with with Louise, it's like you think there's no way they're gonna make this like a sad thing. There's no way. There's no way. And then you find out, yeah, she's been she's a shade that was lost at sea who ate a bunch of slave traders. So it's like she was justified in that. And when she beached, she didn't know anything. She's liter- she's still literally a child. She's just also really powerful. And you also find out that like Devil and Popola have been holding her as like a secret weapon to stop near if they need to which when i near believe kills, I, ble- I believe they said that she was a contingency plan in case they couldn't control the shadow lord it was one or the other yeah, yeah, yeah. i think you're I right think and then when near kills right. her they're like well we're fucked <laughs> yeah i think you're right jose um and like but then Wait, when you blame, see the fact really oh quick. yes sarah didn't Sorry. she also eat she ate everybody on that ship. She didn't just eat the slave traders. She ate the slaves also. She ate everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she did. It's implied. Right. Oh, if where are the slave traders and the slaves? Do 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 do. <laughs> like, and, like oh, she ate everybody, and then isn't it? She took the form of one of the slaves, if I remember. I like, don't know about that. I see maybe one of them was like she. She either took the form of a daughter of one of the slave traders. Because it had to be someone that she yeah, she took someone over on that shit. Yeah. One one of the saddest things that come out of it though is that she eats the red bag dude, and you have to break yes. it to his wife. Oh. And you have God. to choose: do you tell her? Or do you not? I told her because I can't lie to people. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to just be like. I don't want to give her false hope. Well, see, yes. then, there's another side quest like that though, where you can tell the guy like, "Hey, I found the thing where your like wife died or whatever, and the, or possibly she might still be there." You and you can tell her. If you tell her that there's hope, he leaves, and his family that he's now like met and yes. had a happy life with are by themselves, and he'll never come back. Or you can lie to him, and he has a happy life. Yeah, and that's something I told him the truth, and I was like, "Oh, I did, I, I did too." And then I reloaded uh, the save. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like I'll live with my decision, I guess. And just but yeah, you you find out Louise is like she just wants to be human, and for some reason she somehow got in her head that if she eats pe- humans. She'll become human and we'll, we'll replicants, but she doesn't know the difference. Yeah. Like, and it, it's actually kind of sad. And like, a, she is a monster that has the ability of speech, and she would have no reason to not think this. So it's like, what do you do in that scenario? It's, it's terrible, but also you're murdering people left and right. So who are you to judge? One of the best things to come out of the uh, like starting with ending B revelations and whatnot is that relationship that she develops with um, the postman mm-hmm. and how like, it, it's like, oh, she's not chasing him down to the lower decks to eat him. She's going down there to like get him out of harm's way. Exactly. 
And she's like, she's no, sad. I gotta save you. He's like yeah. a father figure to her at that point because he's helped her and like fed her and made sure she's alive. And then he's and- like, oh, I kept this thing alive and it murdered people. So now I feel yeah. bad. And it's like, did she look like a little girl? You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the and fact that discuss how he thinks that she's on her period when she just ate yeah. somebody. Oh, no. he, he is a dumb cis man who doesn't understand. <laughs> oh, no, how how do I handle this? And then asking Kaide like, and she's like, I just had lunch. <laughs> he sees a severed human hand. He's like, oh, it's just, just period stuff. Yeah, that's weird. I can confirm that yes, that his <laughs> severed hand is just... <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. I mean, like, I can't... It's I, I can second it. It's okay. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, can't. Sorry, you know Can't now. Confirm. We hate to break it to you. <laughs> uh, you do have to eat people. Yeah. Go ahead, Blake. I, 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 I've just, I've just handed complete control over to you for this episode. There's a, there's. I appreciate. I hope I'm doing a good job. There's an Italian. I think it's Italian horror movie called Raw. That's apparently all about that. Like, they trick a girl into eating raw meat because she's vegan, and then she turns into a cannibal. Because of that, I need to watch it. Oh, I, I've seen it years ago. Yeah, it's. I heard it's also really gay. Is it really gay? I don't remember that to be honest. It, it's been years though. I feel like I heard it was really gay. I just um, remember not, were very mad. Uh, v- okay. This is the thing. There's there's vegans and there's white privileged vegans that don't understand what you're doing, and they get mad over everything. Then there's yeah. actual, then there's vegans who actually know how to like look up shit and be like, you know, am I being ethical? Am I doing this? Am I actually doing good? And that I support those people hundred percent and acknowledge that yeah. for a lot of people also, it's a privilege. Um, that being yeah. said, um, another conversation. Entirely. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Um, so I don't know where we go from here. Um, I mean, we, we have an CD and E. Well, what? I'm sorry. Oh, we can talk about C, D and E. Okay, so that's what I figured we should go through. Um, so, you know, ending C and D are the same, uh, more or less, perspe- the new perspectives, with a little bit more detail here and there, but nothing too much. Um, but you're faced with the, the the penultimate choice that seems to, oh my god, there's a cat on screen, and I completely <laughs> I lost track of what I think we should also point out really, really quickly there that these cat. endings, you need all weapons to get these. These are... Yeah. These That's the what Sarah endings. was talking, and Sam and everyone were talking about before. These are the two base endings. The, yeah, that definitely the, that use require a guide. Yeah. Don't yeah. be afraid to use so, one. You gotta get these for the uh, the ending. And also, so. to be fair, so it, it explicitly out. tells you um, once you start, uh, I guess, like ending C, or once you start that playthrough of it, it tells you, like, hey, you need all the weapons. It's not like some obscure thing the game never lets you know. Yeah, which also means you have to do the, the DLC with Poppineer. You get three weapons from that. Well, yeah, you, from what I understand, you don't need those, those to get the ending. Those ending. aren't you need not, I got them no. anyway just because I was scared. <laughs> I, didn't well, I did it because I, I went because it was fun. Yeah, and then I ended up using one of the weapons forever because it was shaped. It has dragon yeah. from. But I think. I know what you're talking about. about like that there's a way to cheat on how to get the two endings without having to redo everything. I made a save right before I entered the Shadow Lord's castle. And I, I did ending C. I got ending C on my original save. Then I reloaded the other save, and I did ending D, and just resave that onto the other one. Don't play through all of the second half of the That's game. The way to do it. Yeah, because there's see, no I'm, ending. You're fine. <laughs> see, I'm a crazy person. I needed to see A, B, and C all on my save because I need that validation. You need a stamp. I if need the stamp. Get, well, no, Wait. you still get the stamp because you save over the ending. I of the know. Gun. Wait, Blaine, did oh, you not do the thing where you you have a separate save file right before you get the ending for C? Nope, I played through it again because I'm a crazy person. No. Oh, I, told I didn't you. Even do that. I was like, I just I want to get through this. I want to get to ending E before it's spoiled for me on Twitter yeah. or something. It's, it's I don't know how I didn't that get that. That was my thing. same thing. It, I just was like, I can't like I don't mind doing this all again. I have more m- murder pod podcast to listen to, but it's like <laughs> again. Like, like we can't we can't get into E though without at least getting into the choice of C and D. Yeah. So again, when you find all the weapons and you can make the choice, the choice is. Um, at the after defeating the Shadow Lord and essentially fucking everything up, kind it is revealed that as Kaine was walking away, she wasn't just walking away to go live her life. She is a, because of the fact that 
um, Nir and her friends have all shown her such kindness. Both her and Tiran have changed as individuals. They're no longer full of hate. They're actually full of love. Kaine also seems to kind of acknowledge a lot of like how fucked up her life has been, like a fucked thing she's done. Um, but in ending E, that also seems to be almost kind of retconned. <laughs> um, we'll get into that. And so once you have to fight her, and while you're fighting her, you have a choice. Um, you, at the moment where she's about to, you, you, have to, you have a choice of two things. You can shove your sword through her chest and kill her, which means she won't suffer anymore, but she's also, she'll be dead. And you get to spend the rest of your life with Yona. Or, because of plot contrivance, because that's the way these games work, um, you can save her, purge her of, you know, Tyran and all the shade thing, and she'll survive, she'll live. But you have to trade your entire existence. And not just like, oh, not just you die. It is literally, you will never have existed. The things you did happened... But everyone will forget you ever existed. As far as anyone's concerned, you never did exist. Um, Yona will believe that Kaine saved her on her own, um, and will not even know why. Like it, it's 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 kind of ingenious to think about how like it's just it's as if you were literally erased from the annals of history. And when you make that choice, the game makes you watch all of the things you've accrued all be wiped away one by one, page by page. And it's one of the it is one of the most genuinely interesting bits of game design I've ever seen, both in this and in Automata. Um, and so you think that's the and and it, it's the reason for that question is something that uh, you know when people go like when people say like well oh, so what's that if that's it I mean that's just kind of dumb why why is getting there and all this contrivance and blah 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 and I usually just say well it's because it's not about just like all the it's like when people go like well how come these lore bits don't line up and how come I got to look at all this expanded massive conspiracy theory book uh bulletin board of like plot threads it's not even really about that it's about just asking questions of what you would do as a person and this question is would you give up everything yourself and everything you know about yourself to save the person you arguably you care about most in your life um and to contrast that I actually think that Automata's final choice in this vein is more interesting because I love that the yes. evolution of the, the evolution of that is mm -hmm. is now. Would you then do the same exact thing for someone you don't know and have never met in your life? Would you help them but give up? Every, would you give up your own life to help a stranger? And I think that that evolution just speaks about. I guess Yoko Taro is a person between games. I want to um, do a quick little uh, comparison between um, Replicant and um, an Automata. Where I, I totally agree with everything you're saying right there with uh, Automata pulls that concept off better than Replicant does. Um, I, but I do think Replicant pulls off the revelation plot twist better than Automata, where it, you're not just... Cause they, they both go off no, the it thing does. Where, where you're, you're hearing better, you're hearing uh, the, the context of what's actually going on, but the impact of it means so much more in Replicant. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, but, but like this might be a little bit of a segue um the real meat and bones of near replicant to me is absolutely those revelations in b and so like like i like i said i, I would readily recommend at anyone go ahead and play Aut automata mm -hmm. replicants probably a bit more of a bigger ask for people that aren't um aren't like as eager to jump into it um like I think the real meat and bones of, of Replicant comes down to be, and like as much as I enjoy C and D, I would say maybe some people can stop once they see B through. Whereas, um, and especially just more so because for C and D, you you do have to uh, play through that second half of the game again, unless you want to do the safe thing that me and Sarah did. Uh, where it is in uh, Automata. Um, uh, those C and D playthroughs are completely separate from what you go through in A and B. But oh, they are. Mm -hmm. but, um, um, and I, that is something I would say that the Automata does. I don't even want to say better, but it is. It's more interesting to consume because it is not just different perspective four times. It is this. It's essentially the second. Uh, you, I think you just said this in so many different words, but it's the second half of the story is C and D in Automata. Yeah. Um. Uh, unless anyone else, anyone had anyone, anything to add about C and D, I think we pretty much summed it up. Um, I yeah, think Sarah it. wants to get into ending E. 
I really want to get into ending E because do you, I really do. Do you mind it. if I say how we get ending E and then I hand it off to you? Yes. Or do you want to? You do mind? No, no, or? Go ahead. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. after you've defeated these, um, you're expected to just, what do you do? You just play the game again because why not? You're a crazy person and you love it, JRPGs, and you're going to play oh, this multi hour, this, tw- this eight to 12 hour RPG. You're going to play it again right after beating it four times. So I did that. And. When you get up to the point where you're fighting the monster in the airy and Kaine is fading away and dying, who the reaches scene, out? You re- near reaches out, but then as as Kaine reaches back, Thera, his hand digitizes and fades away uh, in very automata fashion. Kaine wakes up from a nightmare, trying to remember the boy that she can't remember his name, but who saved her life. And that starts ending E. So the one thing people should know about ending E, uh, y- Yoko Taro has actually gone on a record saying that he wanted ending E to be that way because he wanted people to come back months later and be like, oh, let's replay Nier again. And then you replay Nier six months later and you're like, wait a minute, this isn't how it's supposed to go. So like, obviously <laughs> us crazy people played it like right after we beat ending d and we're like oh my god gotta play through the entire first half of the game again and it's like i mean it's fine it's really slow the whole first really half like a yeah. quarter um and so uh, just real quick sir i do think it's interesting in order to get ending e you have to use a different name on the file oh yes. i'm glad jose brought that up <laughs> yeah so um my dumbass tried I-, I just use my name for everything so i felt bad for near in the entire playthrough that i did because it's like sarah's here and it's like uh, uh, that's not my name um but I tried to use sarah again and the game very ominously says you cannot use this name for some unknown reason please pick another and then you know that that's fucking ominous as hell so i felt bad because it's the one playthrough i named him near <laughs> so that exists in the original game too if you try to rename it's it's an extra thing of no 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 you can't just redo it again that character name is dead forever yeah go so, on though. so ending e starts when obviously kaine reaches out to take near's hand his hand digitizes the same way that stuff does in automata that's when you're like oh shit we 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 doing stuff so um, Kaine will, wakes up, we're actually playing as Kaine, which is something that people have been wanting forever, and she plays like a dream. She's wonderful. She plays uh, better than um, here, to be like, honest. Yeah, I was, oh, yeah. was like, I started crying. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> this is what I've wanted this entire time, is to just play as Kaine. I've wanted plays- that since I beat the game originally. It's, yeah. I think, one of the biggest problems I had with the original game is that, like, I mean, honestly, I'm also still kind of pissed we didn't just play as Kaine for Route B, but that's here, here nor there. They gave it to us in the form of an epilogue ending, which I am thankful for, and something that should have happened fucking ten years ago. So, uh, Kaine wakes up, Kaine's pissed, what does it pissed person do they go out and kill things like you're literally sent out to kill things it's kind of like the pseudo tutorial on how to play kaine which is incredibly interesting in its in its own right and uh someone from the village is like hey yona's looking for you she wants she wants she wants to talk to you but then they go oh but wait something's going on in the forest maybe you should head there and kaine's like what should i do first so obviously it was that whole dilemma to me because I'm like, put Yona. I'm like, put the forest. So I ended up going with the forest. Sorry, Yona. Gotta go. Like I'm like, all right. No even lets you go to Yona. Did anyone try I that? I didn't try. I, I didn't try either. <laughs> oh, no. Are we <laughs> all trying try to ask you all the same thing? I never. Jose, did you try to go back to the village to talk to Yona? I, I don't remember if I did. I, I feel oh, like no, I did. All terrible people. <laughs> I gotta check on Yoda. No, it's okay. She's fine. Yep. All right. Gotta oh, we, go. we gotta go to the tree. But so, getting to talk to the tree, I get to talk about one of my favorite parts of the base game of Nier, which is Sleeping Beauty, which is the tree. Um, so, the tree's just a visual novel. Like, there's music in the background, and they've gone back and added voice acting to some of the lines. But it's a visual novel puzzle, which can get kind of annoying because the choices change every time you gotta redo it, which is a bitch. Which is like, what color were her eyes again? Like, how many people did she go into battle with? But it's also like, so the tree is basically a computer memory bank. The tree is meant to keep the memories of all of the gestalts in, in like, basically this like weird hybrid. It's stuck here until the gestalts get their, get their bodies back. 
But since yeah. the Gestalt haven't gotten their bodies back, the tree is just holding all of these memories, which are, there's one memory that's totally a reference to like Red Eye and Dragon Guard and maybe kind of mom. That's been a fan theory forever. Uh, yeah, like where it's like, oh, I remember a story about a dry a red dragon. Oh, I forgot about it! Sorry, yeah, I'm like, like, oh, that's a story for another time. He can't forget about this. And there's a story about like a woman who leads these like resistance fighters into battle to fight Red Eye, and it's it. People think that's Kaine's mom. Like, there's been theories forever that that might be Kaine's mom because it mentions that she leaves a daughter behind. So people are like Kaine's mom. Um, but so it's literally a visual novel that has beautiful music going on in the in the background. There's a lot of like psychological themed elements in the visual novels too mm-hmm. that sort of hint at like oh guess, uh, these humans aren't really human blah blah all this stuff well this is all in like the first half of the game You're, you you don't go into the tree you just find a shade in the tree nom nomming his way through the tree's like memories and you like you kill the poor shade and the tree's like I'm good now thanks well an ending E robots start coming out of the tree because you're like wow why are all these people really really dead and then oh sorry about that uh robots that look a lot like automata robots kind of start coming out of the tree and yeah. you're like <laughs> you're like what is going i was on? like weird i was i was like what the <laughs> fuck oh god we've hit it so Kaine does what Kaine does best and she kills all these robots and you're like oh shit i gotta go into the tree i gotta go into the tree so you start going to, into the tree. Now, keep in mind, all of this was made specifically for this remaster. None of this was in the base game. So as you go into the tree, it's beautiful. Like, I, I was playing on a PlayStation 5, so it was running at, like, 60 FPS. It was gorgeous, even though it was all, like, metal parts in a tree. Like, it's it's beautiful. And you're seeing all these, like, automata-style robots, and you're like, what the fuck is going on? Throughout this tree, you hear two very specific voices talking to you. Like, oh, we know who you are, Kaine. We know how this mem- how this, like, timeline isn't supposed to go the way that it is. And you're like, what the fuck? Why does this sound so familiar to me? And Kaine still kills things, does what she does best. And what happens is the the AIs, which I believe they were AIs, they form into beings that look very similar to 2B and 9S from Near Automata. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? Again, Always Sunny music plays in the background. You're like, what is going on? And they're like, oh, we're the AIs that run the tree. And you're like, no, you aren't, but okay. And Kaine tries killing them. They obviously keep reforming themselves because the tree's roots are actually uh like um computer parts so they keep reforming them themselves blaine or sam please pipe in if i forget stuff jose too uh it's like so then they start sending kaine androids after her like copies of yeah like tube reconstructions or whatever yeah. like tentacle and reconstructions start- cool sending them constantly after you and you and it gets this like gauntlet where it's like oh god when the fuck does this end because they're coming everywhere who comes but the goodest boy himself a meal forms back into existence with two extra arms yes. for no <laughs> arms. does he like literally like, tell you like hey i don't have time to explain it i was no, in the desert she's I was like, like where did you get those arms you know, and he's like oh uh, uh, i don't know let's go over there i got myself a new body and you're like oh wait a minute so okay just to touch on that happened. real quick I, th- I thought it was just like such a beautiful little part of like even, i don't know if you want to call it fan service is like hey emil gets to hang out with kaine again because and then the original it's- version it was just emil's head just like stuck so far away from everyone else like for, as far as you know that was his last interaction he ever had with any of his friends exactly uh he was in the yeah. desert which is interesting it was implied he yeah. meets the aliens that make the he's robots like, that, that's a whole uh, other story do the that's a whole other stuff. story with aliens we're, yeah we're, we're aliens on that, right that now. might not even be canon anymore because we don't see it in the new version yeah <laughs> okay so all this stuff happens emil comes back and helps you and what is probably and i'm gonna just lose my mind getting to talk about it out loud my favorite transition in gaming history ever is you walk through a door in the tree and you walk into the fucking memory sections from automata that includes the ui the it's the sections the voice oh, is good. Humanized, and i lost oh. my mind and, and like, who oh shows my up God. again 
Who shows up again, Sarah? Um, we're talking about returning pit characters. Weiss comes back, and you use Weiss's kind of, and it's so cool. It's but the hype is true. That whole sorry, sorry. Kind sorry. of getting ahead of ourselves. Kind I of forgot what? that there's stuff in between there. I'm sorry. There is- yeah. <laughs> so, from what I could gather, because I went back and thought about it again, from what I can gather, it was almost like we were going through Kaine's memory bank as we're going through like the memories that she had forgotten yeah. that she very much wanted to remember. Very interesting. They did it in the style of the memories that Two B and Ni- that Nine S saw in Automata, and you fight a couple older o- older bosses. Um, don't the girls in red come back? I don't I think, think so. I don't recall, but I, I know for a fact one of them I- was there. One of them was. Yeah, like she might have been there, but I don't know if you fight her. I don't. Yeah, no, you don't fight her, but she's there. I think she's one of the voices talking to you, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you start fighting one of one of the bosses. I think it's Hook again, and it's very obvious that Kaine can't do it by herself. So who comes out of the memory ether to fucking help her? Is is Weiss? So you and you use Weiss as Kaine. Like keep in mind, all of his bullets turned into the pod bullets from automata like yep. they are going balls so to the good. wall like hope you played so everything are all digitized the lances mm-hmm. everything yes it's full on automata just slapped in your face again and it was and, like a whole section like that oh, whole you're playing through and they're showing like you're trying to fight everything and like they're turning into people and you're like oh no you have to kill the people and then you're getting hit and like beat up as kind and like she just can't do it and like that. He also whole... starts hobbling the way that two B does. I, I yeah. know. That. Yeah. Yeah. So like exactly. then her kind of collapsing, and you're like, oh crap! Like what's gonna happen? And like hearing Vice, I it was like yelling. I started crying. I'm like, oh my god, this is the line. It's like so it's something like, good. oh, you really can't do anything without me, hussy. Yes. And I'm like, like <laughs> oh, he's back for us. I've so never good. been so glad to hear Vice say hussy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> It's such which you can you can argue that that it's a fan service uh uh section for those who played Automata, which obviously we know Yoko Taro, it's very important and we're gonna get to that in a second. But like it it felt it felt like weirdly going home in a weird way when I was playing through that because Automata left a lasting impact on me. That game literally changed how I viewed uh story in the video game medium like one of the ways i viewed story and just to see the ui change and to hear when it starts off quiet and you just hear kine's heels against the like against the like platform the same way that you would hear two bees and to see her hobble just like to to be like it literally i was like i was like i stayed up late just so i could finish that section because i needed to see where it went and uh, i'm I'm, a, I'm very glad i did it goes because- places I mean, to be fair, can we can we say like the entirety of ending E is basically? I don't want to say over glorified because I don't think it is, but it it is basically fan service in the best way possible. Yeah, well, it's supposed to just connect it indefinitely to like Automata, right? Like yeah. that was the whole point of it. And isn't and it was there the theory? Yeah, isn't there also the theory, or it might be official? I don't remember. Um, where A two is just kind of reincarnated. Yes, there is there is an overwhelming fan theory that A2's memory bank was taken from Kaine because A2 mentions like I think part of A2's backstory mentions Red Eye, which would connect that woman in the tree story as Kaine's mother. Yeah, there's some which, stuff in there where yeah. I'm like, okay, and I remember initially playing Automata and being like I like out of all the characters, I like A2 the most. It all's like she reminds me of Kaine. <laughs> less <laughs> less angry, but me, like you made me remember A2's memory bank specifically came from a young girl that lived with her grandma. So exactly. it's pretty much confirmed that A2 is Kaine. Gotta be at that point. Mm-hmm. Um so so you defeat all you defeat uh Hook and the memory unit asks Kaine. Who do you want to bring back? You can bring back any anybody. Who do you want to bring back? And Kaine says him. And they go, well, what's his name? So what do you got to do? You got to put in the name of your save file that they deleted to bring back, which is fucking fantastic. 
and you see everything start coming back. You see all of your weapons. You see all of your words. Which doesn't make sense for anybody <laughs> listening. You see all of your items. You see all of your potions. All of your maps. All of your notes. Everything. And how does this game end? With one of the most prettiest cutscenes I've ever seen in my life. And also one of the weirdest. And also making me think Dragon Guard pretty hard. Because- <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I'm so glad you're here because <laughs> as soon as I saw like the the flower, I was like, "That's weird." Because so That's interesting. It was this beautiful pre-rendered, meant for next gen cutscene, which again on PS5 it looked fucking gorgeous. It shows a cutscene of this giant flower erupting from the Earth, which you can assume is a lo- is like a lunar tier, I guess. But for people who have played Dragon Guard, flowers aren't great. And flowers equal dish dish flowers dish mean something went wrong. Mm-hmm. You don't <laughs> want to see flowers because you're like, oh, here we go. And sitting in the flower, holding on to little baby boy near naked near. By the way, that's a near, but that's a naked. That's a naked. That's a naked boy. <laughs> that is a naked oh. child. That's a naked sure. child. Imagine if it was Papa near Sarah. Well, uh. Mm. <laughs> Please don't do this to me. Uh, I, I, I'm on a roll. Do not do this to me. Um, and hold and <laughs> and holding and holding him as Kaine, and that's how it ends. And again, I'm glad Sam is here as someone who has a very prolific Dragon Guard back background. Blaine, Blaine too. Jose, I don't know how your Dragon Guard to a degree. Is. I know more than I've actually played. I and just know clips. So bless, bless my Papa Clips for everything he has taught me. Um, yeah, that's not great. That has very big lasting implications for everything. See, yeah. I didn't, that's I like didn't, the, the theories. It's like some that means something went wrong in the timeline. Yes. I know the flower I know the one flower in uh what zero is Drinking the main character. Hungry? Yeah. Yeah. I know that one flower is like flower a parasite or something. Right. Like I know it that. It's but like I did, I've bad. avoided most of the details because I am gonna play it. Um, it's okay. I'll but I didn't pick up on word. that with the ending. What? I'll say one word really, really, really quick, which I which I brought this up to Blaine, and I brought it up to Nexus, who's who, who's in the chat, too, because it kind of kind of made me thinking. Uh, the Shadow Lord, when he's brother near, half of his body is kind of made of this stone that reminded me of the Queen Beast. Mm-hmm. And the flowers made of, I think, the same stone. Yeah. And obviously, we know the Queen Beast, ple- and we don't have Nexus here who has, like, the soundboard that has the, like, that has the sound from the Queen Beast, which I love her sound every part. time I hear it. It's... it's go, like, go to Nexus's stream sometimes and yeah. ask her to use her soundboard. And also, N- Nexus just said in chat, ending E more or less confirms that early Yorha units are heavily based off of Kaine. Yeah. So... It's yeah, the implications that that ending brings about, which at first I was so fucking confused. I was like, that's the isn't that the flower that's in Zero's eye? And then the game's like, bye. I'm like, hold on. I, I will say I, I did catch I did catch the uh, flower similarities between Dragon Guard 3, but I think I c- kind of came away with a more positive outlook. I'm like, yeah, the gang's all together. That's a happy ending. I, I have the same amount yeah. of dread, just like, oh, no, shit going to be bad. <laughs> We'll see, like, no, I can't I get into it that. completely because I don't. I don't want to spoil it for Blaine, but like lots of lots of Dragon Guard three stuff where it's like once you play it and you know how things came to be, then the flower makes a lot more sense, and then it's really like, oh no! And I know even for oh, me, no. <laughs> Dragon Guard four timeline is <laughs> fucked. Coming in twenty twenty four. Essentially, I was hoping. To be completely real, I wouldn't be surprised if because this sold Game Busters. This was the fifth highest mm-hmm. game selling yeah. in May. It's, what, it's tied with Automata, right? And they both sold like over yes. however like, many fucking copies. This this game was on the top of the charts with like Call of Duty and NBA. What the fuck is here? <laughs> like it was nuts. So like to be completely fair, with how ending E ended, I. People have been saying, oh, we need like a Dragon Guard remaster. No, we don't. Don't, don't, don't ask for that. Um, Nobody wants that. We, we need a remaster of three. Yes, and then exactly. To go with the new, I don't know if they could remaster Dragon Guard one because there's some, there's some problematic things in there. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. this yeah. I was going to say, well, they'd have to change stuff because I know people would see 
a certain character and be like yeah it's also Eat. not just eating babies and babies eating you like it's it's, it's also it's, true to, to sum it's it up and i know that. it's bad stuff like, to sum it up for people who because i know nexus in chat knows what we're about to talk about well i'm about to talk about but it's like dragon guard one is a game that i can look at it and be like i understand let's not beat around the bush one of the playable characters in that game is a straight up pedophile <laughs> and yeah. It, it when you know the reasons why it is, it makes sense because everyone in that party in that game is more or less a horrible, nasty, garbage person that you're not supposed to sympathize with. Aim for I Sarah. Sarah is just there. Well, if that's the little kid, nah, he's fucked up too. <laughs> the kid with the golem, he's just there. Leave him he's alone. He's fucked up too. He's fucked up too. He does shit in Dragon Guard too, even though I know that's not technically yeah, canon. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I still enjoy it though. Um, also, Dragon Guard literally came about because what was it? It was either PlayStation or Square. Was at E3, and they were tired of hearing like game pitches. And Yoko Taro came it. in and was like, "Hold on, I have an idea." And they just said, "Fuck it," and funded it. They didn't know what the fuck it was. I wish I could have seen their reactions like after the game came out. Like, here it is. Um, Sorry, it was a bad idea. To, to, to bring us back together because we're already okay. we already are pretty pretty over time. I don't mean to cut anybody off, but um, my big reading of I see I didn't have all the like oh no, but what's going to happen because I didn't know about all this visual imagery aside from just no. I knew the flowers bad. I didn't put it together with uh, flower bad. And, it's always bad. <laughs> And I actually read it more kind of similar to Jose said, where it's like, I was like, oh, it, I, it felt like a catharsis of Nier gets to basically not experience the hell that was his go bringing coming to adulthood. It also fixed an issue that I still have with these games where in the in Replicant, Kaine is 17 and Nier, I think, is 15. Or I know they're they're like a year or two apart, so it's actually not creepy, the fact that they develop kind of a romantic thing. But Kaine gets frozen for like however many years so when it's near is like 20 years? something yeah kind of still technically 17 when near is like 20 something so it makes and things kind of uh, it's even it's even worse if you're popping near and then it is meals into she's, you also she's very awkwardly aged up so it's Emil, even weirder i don't remember if neil is straight up into you or if it's he more is. just a child crush i thought i took it as like a childhood crush thing um for that but either way and it's still kind of weird because Nier is also still an adult when that scene takes place, even in Replicant. So, hmm. I choose to... In, I, again, I hope I'm right in this interpretation, but I choose to view it as like a child having a crush on an adult, and an adult not seeing it that way, because you're an adult, you're not going to be yeah. like, oh yeah, let's do it with this child. Um, but like, with Kaine, it's always kind of been weird, and it's still weird, but it's at least better now to think, oh, now they can actually be of like similar age, like, because now what, it's like, I think it's like however, however many years later, and Kaine is now maybe like 20 near is like going to be 14 again it's still weird i don't know but like it feels less weird than it was before maybe they get to at least grow up together it also and like it also doesn't really make sense why it would spit out kid near and not like older near yeah i don't when know he, why when he was a race he was older yeah, yeah it's not that i thought about now. that too I don't know, but all we know is that flowers are very bad, and I feel Symbolism. like there's no for this this franchise. Yeah, even and even when like I was playing through E, I know it's supposed to connect to Automata, and so obviously the voice actors Automata, etc. But when I saw the twins, I thought they were supposed to be references to one and her brother. I because well, their like, characters were very similar, and I'm like, hmm. Well, we also know that Yoko Taro likes the symbolism of twins as like Devil and Popola, Thera and Mana, I think her name was. Adam and, and Eve. Adam, Adam, Adam and Eve. The way that I saw it personally, and I actually went back, and again, again I keep bringing Clems up, but he's such a good boy. Um, I went back and I rewatched all of Clems' videos that include all the Dragon Guard ones, the Near ones, everything. I saw it as more of a double reference to zero uh to the twins from dragon guard three to sarah and mana because they looked just like the twins to also to be a 9s because they had the same voice actors and while they aren't meant to be twins they look a lot alike because of just the androids meaning to look a lot alike yeah. so i feel like that was just yoko taro doing his own like twin thing but also a subtle reference because especially bring up the flowers for those who played like dragon guard three 
and just bringing up the whole like oh this we know like this was loosely connected to automata before but now this is fully connected to automata like the whole yes we're connecting dragon guard to Aut- automata we're fully connecting near to uh, to automata not just the crazy you're going into the m- memory bank thing but it's also you can also take that and nexus brought this up but the whole kine is the early yorha androids that could be them copying her fighting style copying her memories which is collecting why data from fighting her with copies yes. of herself her. Yes, which is why A2 is all, oh, she she was implanted with the memories of a young girl who lives with her grandma. Like it it's such a subtle, oh, we're connecting to all to like to like automata. We're not even given like subtle hints here. We're connecting to not just that, but everything. And it's done so seamlessly walking the line of fan service, and this is connecting to everything that I think I've honest to god seen a game that has much history as Drakengard and near and i mean you can argue like the 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 remind dlc for uh kingdom hearts 3 and like the melody of memory stuff but like this is like you're connecting everything in such a way that Drakengard people would know only people who played near automata can figure it out and people who have played everything is fully going to understand Oh, this is what we did. No, it's not just a coincidence that we're using twins again. And I forgot to mention the uh the uh the the twins in red too, which again, I'm pretty sure one of them shows up here. And again, in the Final Fantasy 14 raid, they sh- show up also. Yeah, it's I was like gonna say, yeah. it's another yeah. if you haven't played the Final Fantasy 14 yeah, raid, do that as well. It's apparently canon as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah and there are also Drake and Guard references. Critically acclaimed MMO. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. really quick before Play I pass it off to uh, to a Blaine because she wants to talk, just the the cleverness of the way that ending E is is what honest to God solidifies near replicant as one of my favorite games of all time, and especially as like a lore person oh, yeah. and as someone who connects to like story and lore in in, in games, how much that did right. When it came to connecting a huge overarching fran- franchise for people who understood and people who don't was fucking phenomenal. And I will honest to God sing the praises of how they did that for a super long time. And like I hold up The Last of Us 2 for its accessibility options, I'm going to hold up Ending E for how you connect shit for those who don't understand. Doing it in such subtle ways that it's not shoving it into your face. Because I've actually heard the argument that the change from replicant UI and everything to automata is really shoved in your face. It's not. Not it's if you understand. Subtle. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just like you not if you get it. Subtle change. It's not like, oh, here you are. You're an automata. It's, Did you know you're an automata? By the way, it's like, no, no it's just there's there. a reason you're an automata. Like it, it, exactly. it, it, it does a good job. It's it's essential to try to boil everything down and get, I want to try and get us to the wrap up because I know we've been pretty over the time. Sorry, um, I just haven't no, been no, able to okay. talk about that and I'm really excited. No, no, and that's why I wanted you to just kind of take the floor. Um, I, I just, I'm just, I'm trying to think of how we can bring this all together. So, like, it, it, it's, it's yeah, it's like, you could argue it's fan servicey, you can argue it's this and that, but I think it all is deserved. It comes together not in a sense of like, what can we do to just shut fans up? It actually comes to the thing of like, what are missteps we took that we can kind of fix what are things we can give people that have been hungry for more of like the connections and the lore and also just the emotional thoroughfare of like what these characters have gone through. People really wanted to see these people possibly come back together, like Emil and them. If this is a new timeline where Emil gets to live with Kaine and Nier and Yona until they all die and Emil has to continue on. I'm interested to see where that goes. If this is now means that like the automata timeline is one and this is now another, I'd love to see where that goes. But I think cause I, uh, and cause when I said what I said before about the choices and that being what's really like the emotional, the emotional things that you go through as a player, as well as seeing the characters go through is really what near is about that harkens back to when I saw Nexus make a tweet about it, where she was basically saying the same thing I am. Um, and well, I'll, I'll be a little more eloquently that you don't play these games to just make every single little connection. You make it because of the emotional journey that Yoko brings you through for better and for worse. And, um, that being said, 
I think Near Replicant as a remaster is a 1.5 kind of half remake sort of thing accomplishes that and then some. I think um, while not everything can be fixed and some things are honestly sadly worse, I think it is one of the best games I've ever played. It's one of my favorite games, but I also still won't blame people who are like, I just can't. In the same way that like I don't blame people who are like, I can't, I just can't get into Berserk because it's just too much for me emotionally or from some arguably poorly aged things. And I'm glad that at least now this game exists in this refined manner so that if I want to recommend it, and I know it is maybe to someone's taste, I don't have to say, go buy it on the PSN or go find a copy uh, from like t- almost God in like tw- 10 years ago or whatever. Just buy this new version, play it, and then if you want to see Pop in Your stuff, look it up online or wait for wait for the next DLC slash new full release when Square Enix is like, okay, give us 60 bucks to 70 bucks and we'll give you Pop in Your. Um, I'm sorry to say it, but you all know what's going to happen. I'm sorry and to I'm say it, but, but Blade and I have already decided that, yes, we would pay full price to play yes, Papa Deer. And I'm going to pay for it, yeah. Um, quick, that means I get to see Papa Deer's butt at the end. That means I get to see Papa Deer's uh, butt. The starting oh, with yeah. Jose. Or actually, no, I'm going to end with you, Jose, to close it out. Um, yeah. Does anyone have any very quick closing remarks? Like, just thir- 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, play near. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nier is phenomenal, and Nier. I'm so glad that it's finally available easily for people to play, and it's accessible, and uh, yeah, please, for the love of God, but don't go looking up Dragon Guard if you're not prepared. <laughs> and we're not just yeah. saying that because we're crazy people that bought the multiple hundred dollar version that put the box and the stuff that's in Sarah's webcam right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Jose, your f- closing thoughts as we wrap up. Um, I think it's by far one of the most interesting video game stories I've ever experienced, and I would say anyone that even has like somewhat of a tolerance for PS2, PS3 era JRPGs uh, stuff, it's absolutely worth pushing through. Um, that being said, I don't necessarily think that Replicant is a very well designed game, and that automat I'm sorry, auto auto how's it pronounced in the in the in, uh, automata aut- automata. Um, c- c- kind of kind of remedies a lot of those issues. Uh, that being said, if you can get through it, it's pretty damn well worth it. All right. Yeah. I Please don't think... forget about Papa Nier. He's really great, and he's just a good dad. Come next. Join us next time in Spoiler Cast Part Two, where me and Sarah spend three <laughs> hours arguing over who's a better protagonist, Papa Nier or Brother Nier. But we will oh, still we love each other the at the end. It's okay. <laughs> I think that I, I, I think that. that I think that pretty much wraps it up. Yeah, um, yeah uh, do Jose, it. you you do the closing spiel because you're better at it than I am anyway. Yes, uh, Game Session Podcast is filmed live here on Sunday, six thirty p.m. PST. You can find it later on podcast services and on YouTube as full episodes and individually cut up segments. I don't think I'm going to do any segments for this. Going to leave this as the one one big boy episode. Um. Yeah, thank you for everyone for being on, oh, being passionate about it. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Blaine, and thank you very much, Sam, for being our guest for this. That is a thumbs up for audio listeners. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Good radio. Anytime. Good internet radio. <laughs> um, with that, thank you everyone for hanging out. Uh, back to the usual news and re- whatever we've been playing stuff next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.